So if you're anything like me, you might have maybe like a slight, just like a little bit of an addiction to stationery, thus meaning that you have a general weakness anytime somebody has any kind of a sale or release or whatnot. We're going to ignore the fact that Archer and Olive is having an upcoming Halloween release because, oh my god, the things are so beautiful. And notably, I don't need more notebooks. But it has been requested that we have a look at all of the stuff that I've been getting recently because there's a bit of it. So we obviously have all of these Archer and Olive products, which have recently come in from their full release. So we're going to have a look at that. You can see they're all nicely packaged in their notebooks cute little boxes with their protective plastic. We also have some items from Stationery Pal. We've got some items from the Washi Tape Shop, Journal Say, and Oops -a Daisy UK. So quite a bit to have a look at. Let me know, in, in terms of stationery, what is your biggest weakness item? Like what, what what's the kind of one, uh, either like type of item or, or area of the stationery world that you, you seem to accumulate more of over other stuff? For me, it's definitely notebooks. <laughs> it's one of those things that I know I'm going to use you one day, but do I have enough room in my office for all of you right now? Survey says maybe. So we're going to have to go through and take off all of our plasticky bits so that we can you know, unsheathe the notebooks. I probably could have done this ahead of time, but Jess doesn't do that kind of planning ahead. She doesn't have a planning channel. So... You can see we have a range of different sizes here. So I've got my square notebooks because I've kind of started to uh, move away from A5 only to the extent of collecting. Uh, okay, maybe that's maybe that's a, a big statement. I'm still collecting A5, which is they very much have to speak to me because I have a lot of A5 notebooks. Uh, Monica made me do a count of how many A5 notebooks I have that are... Um, not yet utilized and it was something like 57 <laughs> which is just like ridiculous all right let's see what do we got we've got notebooks and washi stickers for sure excellent pens yep yep i've finally managed to stop buying the acrylograph pens <laughs> Because I don't use paint pens. I find that anything that takes a while to dry is like the nemesis of my of my journaling practice. And anything that I need to use things that take a long time to dry is nemesis. So for me, that's like paint pens and, and blackout paper and whatnot. But I don't know. I, I do have a weakness for them still, but I'm trying to get over it. <laughs> uh, it's really exciting to see that like some of you are here for your first live stream with us and you're like, you're here on the live. That's very cool because I know that we typically do them at a, a set time and day. So it's nice that by changing it up, we get, we get some new peeps in here, which is very exciting. So if this is your first live, welcome. If this is not your first live, welcome anyway. <laughs> Let's see. So we've got four of these notebooks that I have now unsheathed. We've got another two here. So as I was saying, I'm kind of trying to step away from buying A5s as a default because I do have a lot of A5s and yes, it is my preferred size, but my rainbow is kind of full. So I can't build more into my A5 rainbow. Uh, I really need to kind of build other rainbows. <laughs> okay, I don't need to do anything, but I'm going to. So I'm thinking that from now on, when it comes to purchasing more notebooks i'm gonna try and start doing uh a5 not a5 get out we just said not that one b b5s possibly at the moment i'm starting with b6s though which is why we have all of these cute little boxes today because those are my my little b6 babies they're such a cute size though i think that they're a really fun intermediate size between something like a pocket notebook and the regular a5 size they're like Smaller than an A5, so that they feel like not so daunting, I suppose, if if you find an A5 size to be intimidating. But they're not so small that you, like, can't do anything, you know? <laughs> so, I find them to be quite a fun size to work with. I have only done, I think, three months in a B6 size before. Little B6, so cute. Uh, but it was, it was a, an enjoyable experience for me. 
out of here. The A6 is so cute. An A6 rainbow would be absolutely gorgeous, wouldn't it? So that's probably like the next one to do. We'll do B6, we'll get a little rainbow going, and then we will uh, look into building out an A6 rainbow. Um, I can for sure put an A5 and a B6 next to each other. I'm just going to unbox these two first, and then I'll, I'll show you a comparison. Um, these boxes that they made for the fall collection, so bloody pretty. These are the ones that I think have like a magnetic thing on the side or they slip out. I think they slip out on the side. So I know that I don't need to keep the boxes because I feel like that's another weakness I have when it comes to stationery is just not being able to let go of nice boxes. Um, so we'll, we'll see about whether I can bring myself to get rid of these ones, but they are very cute. I've been thinking about how I kind of want to re... I'm going to say decorate. It's not really what I mean, but like redecorate my office uh, so that then I can have a kind of a better filming setup. Um, I kind of like filming at my desk like this, uh, either, you know, face down like we've got here or putting my camera so that it faces towards me. Uh, but I don't really have a very aesthetic background <laughs> where my desk is at at the moment. So I was thinking about how I could rearrange my office so that then it's a little bit nicer in terms of a general filming background. But yes. Alrighty, now as we have gotten rid of all of our protective layers, we can actually have a look at some stuff. So the request was to have a look at the difference in size between an A5 and a B6 move you guys out of the way so this is this is a little b6 baby I'll get get them out uh, gentle 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 because even these ones they're like a really nice box but I, I just i don't i don't need you i know i don't need you box but i want to keep you so this guy here oh it's a little hedgehog that's so cute look at him and this is this is not a new release i think this was the spring release i bought a whole bunch of these the reason that i got so many of them is because they had such a good discount i can't say no to a discount we love savings uh so i figured it's a good time to start building out the rainbow because they were on a very good discount so this is the size of a b6 and if i grab you an a5 so you can see the difference. This is the typical A5 size, which is my personal preference uh, when it comes to doing my bullet journaling and such. But this guy, he's so, he's so little. He's so little. Watch out, watch out, watch out. But if we have a look at something like a pocket, or it depends on who you ask. I think Archer and Olive calls them pocket journals. Uh, but he's so small, so little. Oh, baby. <laughs> So this is the guy that we were working on on Monday when we were doing some uh, A6 or pocket size layouts. Uh, this is the size that I have used previously for an actual like bullet journal and also have my uh, kind of like my travel journal or my go wild journal. That one's in a, a B6 size. And then this is the A5 that I typically would use like the size wise that I typically use for my everyday journals. Yeah. So it's just like a really nice intermediate size and this one is like tiny baby but we have started setting up some layouts in here though and we will have a proper video on the different layouts but that's not a today problem that's a that's a futurist problem let's see <laughs> yeah you love the thumbnail <laughs> like, yeah it's not new information at all i was more like i kind of got to i think 11 o'clock last night and i'm like we should really do a stationary haul video because we've got all of this stationary that's just sitting on your floor and like it's literally just in a giant box on my floor at the moment uh well now it's not it's on my desk but anywho so i finally moved it to my desk and i'm like oh, i really need to either just put this away but people keep asking what i got so let's just let's just do an impromptu live stream but then of course it's 11 o'clock at night so i'm like i don't want to make a thumbnail <laughs> I don't I don't want to have to try. Let's see. So this is our next one, which was also from the spring collection. Uh, so we'll put the box to the side and we can open that up. Oh, it's a snail! Okay, so you might not know, but snails are actually my favorite animals. They're just like super chill, like munching on leaves, which I know is like a gardener's nightmare, but still just like roaming around the garden, looking cute, carrying their house with them. <laughs> oh, snail baby. 
Is this peach my favourite colour? No. But in terms of being part of a journal rainbow, not too bad. We do have a slight dent in the corner here on both of them, which I think is kind of interesting that they both got that. I think it, <laughs> it almost looks intentional. Maybe it's part of their, like, machine that, I don't know, folds this part down. At the end of the day, I'm really not too phased. These were super, super discounted, and they're really going to be viewed mostly from this angle anyways. <laughs> so we have our cute little hedgehog and our cute little snail baby. I love your snail baby. So beautiful. So we're going to put this one over here <laughs> with the little snail in the corner so we can still see him. <laughs> He's so cute. The next one we have up is from the, I know what this is from, Crickets. Summer, the vintage summer, vintage retro summer road trip, vintage road trip summer. Yes, <laughs> snails are terrifying. They're like slugs with shells. Aww, I think they're cute. I think like little baby snails as well, the ones that are like as small as people's pinky fingers. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. You don't even know how cute you are. Anywho. So this guy here is the little beetle, which is a linen cover. The last two were faux leather. I think that this one is actually quite cute in terms of design. I always kind of prefer kind of ooh, leaning more towards like punchier colors that are not necessarily brighter, but like more saturated. So in terms of color as a standoff, it's not necessarily my favorite, but the little car, look at him. So cute. I don't know why you would put, I don't know, foliage in a roof rack. That just seems dangerous. It's not really tied down. So I hope you're not going anywhere fast, otherwise those things are going to come off the back of your car. But it's so little and cute and such a cute size. I don't know if you can tell, I accidentally, we'll put that to the side, but accidentally grated my finger last night while I was making dinner. It bled for such a long time. Maybe because I'm like allergic to band-aids and I couldn't put a plaster on it, but still, we'll try and hide my ugly finger. <laughs> Ah, uh, deformed. Not really. It's it's not that bad. It's not great though. But anywho, so cute little cute little punch buggy or I don't know beetle or car. I don't think it's actually a beetle, but it's still it's cute. So putting that over to the side here so we can still see the little emblem, little car. Yeah, like the linen is not so bad. I don't really mind it. I often find that I get linen dirtier often compared to vegan leather randomly yeah i made an artwork with the tissue it was my my dinner painting time all right so this guy here is one of their i guess regular kind of line i suppose so i'm not really too sure what to expect all right so this one is just one of their when must be one of their older ones because it still has the belly band on it uh so 112 pages that's typical for our b6 size um but this, this is the same color as the Vintage B that they've had previously. Notably, we don't have an emblem on it. It's a nice kind of like blank journal. So if, if you're not really into trying to get try and get this off without hurting myself actually do I even need to take the belly band off anyways if you're not really into emblem designs you know like maybe if this is kind of too cutesy for your vibe or whatever it's cool I get it so this is a nice kind of uh, neutral kind of color color and cover yeah also linen kind of a vintagey kind of color we'll put that to the side too so in terms of a rainbow I'm just like glad at this stage that we haven't had any color double ups because that's really uh what I was kind of hoping for because if you're building out a rainbow, it's nicer to have distinct individual colors compared to a whole bunch of double ups. <laughs> so we'll put those over here, over here. Now we've got another one, which is from their I know, typical older range, I guess. If any of them come in this kind of a box, you know that it's one of their older ones. Because nowadays with every new release, they do an updated kind of box. Uh, let's see. Question. Are you a linen, leather, or other journal type person? Journal cover type person? Mm, I think it really depends for me. Like, I don't mind the linen. Um, oftentimes, I think that that's, you know, plenty fine. Uh, I The vegan leather really depends on what type it is, you know? Because <clears throat> there are some of them that are kind of like a soft, very, uh, I'm going to say impressionable in the sense that if you swipe it past something and it, and it's a little bit too aggressive, it'll like leave a kind of like a dent or a track mark. That's not so great. And I've had some of the vegan leather journals previously that start to kind of rip along the edges 
of the of the notebook which isn't so ideal either but then there are some vegan leather ones that are really nice and they've got like a little texture to them and, and they, they, they feel quite feel quite nice so i'm not too sure i don't know I'm not too sure about that one. Oh, look, a Blue Joe. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> now, from the packaging, I actually thought this was black. So I, I am actually kind of surprised to see a dark blue in here. It's a little bit of a shame because I do technically already have a dark blue one uh, in the, the, the B B6 that I've actually used before. That one was a little Firefly design. It's very cute. Uh, but this guy is just a plain covered dark blue. In terms of our, you know, the stack that I've been sent though, it is not a double up color. And I have no expectation for Archer and Olive to know which notebooks that I actually already have. So as far as goes, like with no double ups in what they've sent me, that is actually quite pleasing. I figured that getting B6s in the mystery boxes or mystery box, mystery journals they were doing would be not too bad in terms of getting double ups. So for these five out of the six that I ordered, we did not get a double up with something that I already have, which is pretty exciting. And like, I have way too many blue Joes. Exactly. <laughs> but look at this. this transition is excellent. I'm really glad that we've got that. And now I just need to build in some other colors. Like maybe we need some purple, some like actual yellow kind of tones, a proper kind of orange rather than a salmon peachy kind of color. But that looks pretty good. So the, the rainbow is, we're making progress on it. And then we get to the one notebook that I got, which I'm probably less enthused about only because I do already have this one. So again, like there's no expectation for them to know what I have. Uh, it was very much like luck of the draw, but that doesn't mean that I can't be a little bit sad about it. Anywho, lovely box, absolutely gorgeous. You may uh, recall where it's from. This one is from the subscription box from last September, and this is their ring bound B6 size. So I do already have this notebook and um, I haven't used it yet, but it does have a very cute emblem on the front cover. Yeah, there you go. Hide the fugly finger. Uh, it's got that little kind of, what's it like? I'm going to call it an A-line house. I know it's not actually called that, but I'm sure it's called something similar. It's a very cute emblem. I just don't necessarily know what I'm going to use a ring bound notebook for. The only ring bound thing that I currently use is, scroll, scroll, where is it? There we go. This guy here who came in the March 2020 subscription box, I believe. So this is a kind of like ring bound notepad, I suppose you can say. It has blank pages. And what I use it for is pen swatching, um, mainly for when I'm like trying to build color palettes. Uh, so these were from previous videos. This one was from when I was doing my, I think, books theme at some point. This was from I think, January 2020. No, it wouldn't have been January. It would have been March 2020. Uh, Koi fish theme. There we go. You can see the donuts theme the color palettes that I was trying to put out. So like, I like how I can go through these and be like, oh yeah, I remember which themes they were from. This one was from February, 2022, when we did the sunsets theme. Uh, and then we get to the kind of um actual theme videos that we have where we do 12 themes together. So you can see me kind of mapping out what colors I wanted to use for each of those and whatnot. But this one I use to do those kind of swatches just on, on pages that, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's messy, uh, but this guy, he's dark grid. Yeah? Yeah? We, we question, we question. Should probably have checked all the other ones to make sure they're dark grid. Ooh, shiny. Anywho. Yes, dark grid on this one. So I'm not too sure at this stage what I'm going to use this notebook for, given the fact that I already have one of these and I haven't used it. So we will see. We'll put that to the side. Now, so in terms of our notebooks, we had this little B6 beauty, this little B6 beauty, this little B6 beauty, <laughs> this little B6 beauty, and a snail, and he's so cute, and Hedgehoggington, so cute, excellent. So those were the B6 ones that I got, and they were all mystery ones. Like I didn't pick these out myself. Uh, they, they just sent me a, a random collection of six, which is quite cute. So those ones, hoopa, going away to the side now. The other two notebooks that we got as part of that were square notebooks. And these are the ones that were actually released in the fall collection. Thus the, uh, you know, difference in the boxes. Gosh, square is so much bigger. 
<laughs> I've actually been very much enjoying my square so far though and that's why I decided to get two more squares because outside of the square that I'm using I have one other one and I'm like Jess you don't you don't need more than that you you're only using the one at the moment but it doesn't matter it's fine we're all allowed to have our vices and my vice is collecting notebooks <laughs> So you might be able to tell that the emblem on the front of these is actually different colors. So this one is more of a kind of rose gold color. And then this guy over here is more of a like yellow gold, true gold kind of color. And similar idea on the side. So for the full collection, they had it so that the spine of the, I mean, they're like made to look like book spines. Yeah. Uh, the spine color was based on the size of the notebook. So because both of these are square, they're this kind of like pretty teal color. But then the emblem down the bottom is the emblem on the actual notebook cover. So we'll do this one first. I know, right? It's an excellent vice. It's totally fine. I mean, like, it's one of those things. You, you've seen those memes where it's like, don't worry, mom, it could be drugs or something like that. So the side of this one slides out to give us the notebook, which is oh, so beautiful. It's so pretty. So this is the teal linen cover with the kind of little, what, is it a coffee? It's a beverage of some description with the little book stack and the little reading glasses. And that one's done in a rose gold foiling. I wonder if the emblem, or rather charm, on the bookmarks is the same color. That one is something that consistently irks me. Oh my gosh, it's actually rose gold. Great success, team. Look at that. So oftentimes... I'm going to say oftentimes, sometimes when they give us notebooks, uh, they'll give us an emblem cover that is like a rose gold, but then give us a charm that's a true gold, and that irks the ever-loving heck out of me. <laughs> like, it shouldn't, but I get bothered easily. I'm a persnickety biscuit. But this is such a cute cover, and it's such a pretty color. So this one is a linen. Uh, I don't know if they still have it available. If they do, it's over at Archer and Olive's website. And if you get anything from Archer and Olive, you can use code JASHYKURIN10 to save yourself 10% off your order because we love savings. Or not, you know, not your mother. You don't have to You don't have to save money. You also don't have to use my code to save money. There are plenty of very awesome creators out there who also support Archer and Olive. But this is our square notebook. It is cute as heck. Possibly, if I ever end up getting to the end of my current reading journal, maybe this would become my next reading journal. It seems to be a thing that a lot of people use square notebooks for their reading journals. I obviously missed the memo. Nah, <laughs> not so much. I just really wanted to use the one from the sub box. But anywho, we'll put this one back into its box. The other guys, I haven't put back into their boxes because I'm like, you're just going to go on the shelf and be part of a rainbow. But this one is precious. We'll put this one, we'll put this one back into his box. But I love that teal color and I love the combination of the kind of rose gold, kind of bronze-esque kind of color and the teal together. It's, it's a very pretty combination because last year I'm pretty sure we got gold on the, on the emblem because they gave us another book stack one, which was very cute and very popular. All right. Let's see. Question. Can you add multiple codes to Archer and Olive? I don't think so. I, 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 I think it, it depends on what the code is. Uh, for instance, I get a, like, as, as being an, an alumni from the, the, the um, what, was, what was previously called the design team is now called the ambassadors team. Because I'm an alumni for that, I have a, uh, a voucher that they give me every quarter. And I know that I can use that voucher along with a discount code. So like those two kind of can be used together. But in terms of other discount codes, I don't really know which ones do or don't work in combination with each other. Yeah. So this guy, on the other hand, is the, I think it was called the foliage uh, design or something like that. <laughs> foliage, foliage. Uh, but yes, you can already tell. There we go. Oh my gosh. So, okay. When it came to the foliage ones, the square was the best. Like, that's just it. That's, that's the business. I, like, you can fight me if you want, but the square was the best. So, of course, I had to get it. But I just thought that the placement of the foliage on the square just looked a lot nicer. Like, it, it looked better compared to the other ones when it was, like, in this kind of square design. So, this is a, is it called an emboss when it goes in? Or is it, is, yeah, an emboss is in and a deboss is out. 
I don't know. It's bossing. It's cute. Uh, this little emblem in here, I kind of wish that they didn't have that, but I understand why they'd put it in because like, you know, it's, it's an after and all of notebook, but it's so freaking pretty. So, oh my gosh, it has gilded edges. I love gilded edges. Oh my God, I'm dead. I've died. I'm so happy. This, okay, I, I know I said that the last one would be my reading journal if I ever did a square reading journal, but I would be pretty damn tempted to make this the reading journal. It's so nice. And I think that the, the feeling, I know that you can't feel it. Here, feel this. Feel it. <laughs> the feeling of this um, faux leather is actually just really lovely. You can probably tell that it has like a slight texture to it, which is quite nice. I don't know if you can actually see it on camera. Apologies if you can't, but just just know that it is gorgeous. So when it came to picking this one, I wasn't really too sold initially on the, the foliage kind of thing because botanicals aren't really my vibe, but I'm very glad I got this. It's actually really, really nice now as I've got it in person. And I really liked that kind of square, uh, like, sectioned off piece because on the other sizes of notebooks it felt a little bit like it didn't look quite right but this one feels good I like this one anywho yeah it feels like the texture of my phone screen yeah I know right so this is the type of faux leather that I actually quite like I like that kind of slight texture to it the other types of faux leather that we have so just here we're doing a, a faux leather deep dive now so we've got this one let me go get you some more so we have this guy here, which we usually get on the Halloween notebooks, which I think we do have something similar to this. Not not the drip, just the this type of faux leather. But this type of faux leather in particular, I find has problems with ripping. So you can see that I've got a little piece of sellotape here to try and <laughs> stick it down because it's kind of ripped on the corner, which makes me a little bit sad. But at the same time, like, I love this notebook. It's supposed to last me a good long while, so I'm going to I'm gonna keep the little piece of tape on. So that's one type, or another type, I suppose. But we've also got, if I can find it easily, ah, there's stuff all over my floor. Packaging. <laughs> the attack by the packaging. Anyways, so the vegan leather that I mentioned before, the one that's a little bit more what I said was impressionable, uh, is the kind of the type that they used on the uh, Plant-Based Bride uh, vegan leather notebook. And I don't know if you can see, but it has a decent scratch mark running along here. And that was not, that was not hard to achieve. That was kind of sad, you know, uh, having that happen. And I also got a little chunk taken out of it on the side here which again was not hard to achieve which makes me kind of sad about the fact that that happened so this type of vegan leather is not my fave but I also haven't seen them do it since this notebook this notebook came out a while ago now so this type love this this type not so much and then the black type from before it's like okay like I don't mind it I like I would not make I would not stop myself from buying a notebook that had it let's put it that way but take that with a grain of salt because we both know that I have a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's too squishy. And this one is too squishy. But, but yes. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, we've got another type as well, which we should probably highlight. So this type is, I would say, more comparable to this guy here. This type is fine. This type I'm totally okay with. Um, but... <sighs> put that back up. This was the little narwhal. This was from summer last year. But this type of vegan leather, I haven't actually used a notebook that has it before. Like I obviously have one, but I haven't used it yet. So I can't really tell you how well it holds up, but I think that this would probably go closer to the top of my ranking. So top, closer to the top. And then as we said for the other ones, oh, a hundred percent. I am waiting for Black Friday. <laughs> I, I'm very conflicted about the, uh, the, the Halloween release in that part of me really, really wants to get something from it because the designs are really, really cute. But I'm also very aware the Black Friday is coming up too and my current voucher, because I, I try to only place one Arturnal of order a quarter. So I try and kind of hold out for whatever I'm most excited about. So last quarter, uh, that was the fall release. Because the fall release is usually the one that I like the most. 
Uh, so I held out for the full release, like tried to ignore every other sale or whatever they were having. I'm like, nope, laser vision. All right, we are going to do the full release. Uh, and then this this quarter, though, we have Halloween and we have Black Friday. So it's like, oh, which one do I do? I'm not sure yet. We'll have to wait and see. I might just have to break my light rule of only doing one and <laughs> going with um going going with two orders, but we'll we'll see what happens. Oh, the gilding. I love gilding. Anyways, putting that to the side. So Yeah, I know, right? It's very much it's not about need, it's about want. <laughs> And we got this because we wanted this. And, you know, obviously make choices that are going to be like, you know, financially viable. Don't put yourself in like bankruptcy because you bought too many notebooks. But I, I, I'm not sad about these. Anywho. So I also have gotten two of the Calligraph packets, uh, both of the autumn release ones. So we've got the autumn midnight and the autumn morning. Um, I feel like we should swatch these. Where's my, where's my little swatch book? Where'd I put your friend? Here, a pile of stuff. So, do you think we will ever get a proper release schedule? Um, I don't know. I think it's the kind of thing, like, as affiliates we get a release schedule, uh, but things are still subject to change, so it's one of those things that we could tell people about when things are planned to be. I'm just flicking through this. We should just jump to the one that I'm already on. Um, we could tell people when things plan to get released, but then that would set an expectation for it to actually happen that way, which then means that if anything comes up, which means that it can't get released at that time, uh, I'm not, yeah, I, I don't know. But what I tend to do now is we've been, <laughs> we've been around the block a couple of times. Um, I just base my expectation about release on whatever happened the previous year. So last year, about midway through September, we had the Halloween release. So my expectation was this year, about midway through September, we will have a Halloween release. Um, we've actually been getting them a little earlier uh, these these past few months. We've been getting things a little earlier than, than previous, which has actually been kind of nice. Um, to answer the question, I think somebody asked it before, is that Halloween is not a subscription box. Halloween is just like a standalone box of items um, that you can purchase if you so desire. And there we go. So we've got these guys. I'm glad there are stickers. I really just wish they were printed onto the pen, but it is what it is. <sighs> Opening the box carefully. Trying not to do a do a hurt on my finger. There we go. Then we have the question, do you like fall or Halloween release more? I don't know. Part of me likes a Halloween release more. Okay, so you know how like on this channel we, we, we're building journal rainbows here. Uh, or at least I am. You know, you, you don't have to. But <laughs> we're building journal rainbows. Uh, but my tendency when it comes to notebooks in terms of what I actually lean towards purchasing, they're black. So... <laughs> It's this kind of interesting, uh, I don't know, what's the, what's the word? Conflict, I suppose. Internal conflict, where I, I purchase or like want to purchase coloured notebooks because I want them for my rainbow, but at the same time, I actually usually tend towards liking black notebooks more. That's why in my lineup of ones that I've used previously, uh, at least three of them are black. And the only reason there's not more is because I actively try to make myself use coloured ones. But anywho. So, doing a little swatchy swatch. These beautiful calligraph pins. I, um, I remember when they came out and seeing the colours, I was just like, this doesn't feel very autumn. Like, I think that these two feel kind of autumn-y. This guy feels a little bit, a little bit punchy for autumn, but it's cool. So this was the first set. Do I remember which? No. They've possibly got colours on the back. They've got colours on the back. So this, this set that we've just done is the autumn morning set. And then the one underneath this, we have the espresso, which I think is supposed to be a double up colour from the sub box, possibly. And we've got burnt orange. That's fair. You can kind of kind of see the burnt vibes. 
I know, right? The Halloween release is cute. I love the idea of a Halloween box. I, I didn't get the Halloween box last year, but I did get to unbox a Halloween box because uh, Rose from Rose K Paper Co, she got one. And in exchange for, I can't even remember what I had. I think I had some like stamps or something. I was like, hey, if I give you these stamps, can I borrow your um <sighs> word? Can I borrow your sub box to do an unboxing it wasn't a sub box i'm sorry this pen has leaked and that's why i've kind of like lost my train of thought you can see it in the in the little container here we're gonna need to do a cleanup <clears throat> this guy got a little bit sploogy which is a bit sad but the pen isn't dried out so i'm fine with it as long as it doesn't make a mess of my desk because that would be as we say not the business there we go. clean 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 it's okay i only tainted my finger all as well to get the stuff on the inside here, though, I'm going to need to get out some kind of a, uh, what's the word? Cotton tip? I do not have a cotton tip at my desk, though. There we go. Clean, clean, clean. Put that on my to-do list. Clean this pen. But, you know, safe. Safe. And this one is a dark sky color. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a pretty blue. Good question. Alrighty, so the question was, you're a rainbow of notebooks. Do you actually use them or are they more just for beautiful? I do use them. Um, so it's, it's very much one of those like shop your stash kind of things. Every time I need a new notebook for something, I go to my rainbow, I pick one out effectively. Uh, so that might be for like my actual kind of everyday journaling kind of stuff. Um, or more often because I go through a fair few notebooks a year and a couple of those are usually R&D journals so i'll pick out the colors that are colors that they're, they're for the rainbow but they're not necessarily colors that i particularly like those ones get used for r d notebooks uh which if i put these back i can show you an example there we go so swatched out our beautiful calligraphs because I will probably continue to get the calligraphs because I like water-based markers uh, more than <laughs> more than the paint pens because paint pens take a time to dry and they are nemesis. I'm actually tempted to sell my acrylographs. I just haven't gotten around to committing on that answer. But these are our pen colors. So we've got the first five, which were the morning, autumn morning. And then we've got the second five, which were the autumn midnight. Yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah, I was going to show you an example. So when it comes to my R&D notebooks, uh, this guy, and then there's another one lurking around here somewhere. So this is the current, one of the current R&D notebooks that I'm using. Um, so like as far as the notebook rainbow goes it's a good color because it's a really nice transition color between a yellow and a green so for the rainbow totally makes sense uh when it comes to doing my journaling though this is not a color that i actually really like so i instead just go through and put like all of those kind of example layouts that i set up in those ideas videos that we put out um so that then it's in a and it's isn't in a good quality notebook uh, but it's not necessarily one that I was going to use for my everyday kind of notebook. So that one is an example. This is another one, a, another example. Like, it's a fine color. Like, I, I, I'm not, I don't dislike it, but it's not my favorite. So I use it for an R&D kind of journal instead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you're enjoying the week that was. I, I do hope to do something with the vlog channel. It's just one of those, like, it, it takes a lot of time and it takes time away from doing other things, you know? Um, it's like, hey, okay, you're going to spend time throughout the week filming, which is, you know, whatever, five minutes here and there kind of a thing. But then you also have the editing time that comes with it. And it's like that editing time could be better spent better spent or otherwise spent doing something else also we've gotten 38 minutes in and i haven't even given you a tink so tink <sighs> beautiful all right so the other thing that came as part of the archer and olive 
portion of my haul was this little envelope being like a gift for you celebrate six years with us so if you ordered on release um I don't know how many they had but they they sent out these little kind of sticker packs so I got one of these as well for ordering like really early uh I I don't yeah I don't know how many they had I stayed up till 3 a.m to get a pack of stickers <laughs> Okay, actually, I stayed up to 3 a.m. to ensure that I got the notebooks that I wanted. But anywho, so it comes with two sticker sheets that are just like six-year anniversary, uh, like happy birthday to us, which is quite cute. I um I don't know when and or if I will use them, but I thought that they were sweet. So there we go. No poll either. What? I, I don't know. Did I miss something about a poll? I'm busy here, Britta. Don't bully me. <laughs> So two sticker sheets, matte finish. I'll put those back in. I could try and put this in. It's a very nice envelope, but I don't want to hurt it. There we go. Ooh, it's shiny. I don't know if you can tell, but it is slightly pearlescent. Anywho, that was cute. It was just a bonus though. It wasn't technically part of like a haul specifically. Now, next collection of items. We are going to put the knife on this craft knife so I don't hurt myself. I don't know if you can tell, but the end of it, got snapped off which means that it's got this like weird blunt but still very sharp edge in here <laughs> there we go so the next section we said was going to be the washi tape shop so we have one two three four five six Oh, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. I know there's another one in here. There we go. Ten. I think ten sounds like a good number. Oh, is there more? No, okay. We're ten. Ten is good. Ten is good. So this is a little stash that the washi tape shop sent me, which I, I know that I harp on about it. And I don't mean to sound like I'm harping on, but the washi tape shop is just so good. <laughs> like It's just so good. I really love their products, but anywho. So we have some that are in kind of sets and some that are standalones. So we're going to do the standalones first. Uh, in terms of the designs here, I didn't pick these ones out. They just sent me a collection of them. So I don't necessarily know exactly what's in here apart from the ones that I've already opened. Uh, so this guy here is a coffee inspired one just like peel off the side so this one is notably not a washi tape specifically but it is a pet tape so it's that kind of like plastic kind of stuff but at the same time these ones lay really nicely onto your page and kind of blend into the page so that you can't really they don't really look like stickers almost or they're not stickers they don't really look like tape so you kind of go through and we'll just move these out of the way so we can actually see you go through and you kind of take off individual designs from it so this one's all kind of coffee shop inspired so we've got coffee like cups with the coffee in them and coffee beans and a little coffee kind of i don't know cafe front type thing uh coffee roasting pot kind of business and whatnot you know the best part is i don't really like coffee <laughs> so i'm thinking that maybe a certain somebody who is a bit more of a coffee enthusiast who lives fairly nearby might get a little bit more value out of this tape so i might cut off a, a good stretch and give it to them um but the greatest thing about these is that you get so many different elements that you can really build out a very cohesive theme using it and it's quite nice like what my arm is going very far out here and we haven't gotten to the repeat yet <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to show you the full design, but you can kind of see how far I've gotten with pulling this off and we still haven't gotten to a repeat. There's a lot on here and it, it just makes it so that like building up that kind of cohesiveness in all of the pages, but then having a difference. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Why didn't we talk about it yesterday? I know, right? Ruined. Um, but it's absolutely excellent. Uh, so this one, yes, very much coffee inspired, very much kind of like coffee cafe culture kind of a thing so yeah monica's getting a gift in the future <laughs> there she is so that is one of them very much like coffee is my love language so we'll, we'll put that to the side so that monica can nab that one next time she comes over 
or vice versa or whatnot. Uh, the other one that I have opened up, which is these like little houses and the color palette on this one is absolutely lovely. I'm just like a sucker for a good color palette. So you can see that it like comes stuck down because there is a backing to this tape. So rather than the tape being stuck to itself on the whole roll, it's a... Uh, just stuck down in the first instance with this little piece which I can never line up again correctly so I always have to stick it horizontally rather than vertically but you can see that this one has little houses but they look like little like houses in cups and stuff like that so like this guy in the middle here with a little windmill is like a little teacup upside down on two of the buildings it's just oh, it's just such a cute like it's a cute vibe I like it and We've got like a whole bunch of different designs for these ones, just like the last one. But I really like the combination of the like the light tan and then the orange. Like look at that. The little like orange city. I love that. I know they're not oranges, they're pumpkins, but still. It's it's very cute. And I like the the blue that's a little bit subdued with it too. Oh, look at the little mushroom bill. Look at it. Isn't it so sweet? So this, again, you get heaps and heaps of designs and it's going to build up a really nice cohesive theme. Little bugglies. Oh, gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So I know that they get people in to do these designs. Uh, I'm not too sure who in particular designed this one, but I think there, I think I have two from them. So we're going to pull out the other one that is in this kind of similar style. So this one was very much like a blue and tan kind of inspired color palette. Uh, whereas the other one I believe is more of a, like a green orange kind of a thing. Uh, so we should have kind of similar looking in terms of the decorative style, but a little bit different. So we'll place that one to the side. Looking cute. This one, you can see that like when you get something from the washi tape shop, it tells you which tape it is by the little sticker on top, which is quite useful. So we can pull those off. A little ASMR. Uh, no, <laughs> no ASMR. <laughs> I'm not about it. <laughs> so, oh, that's cool. It's got the months. I love that. Oh, you can like use it for setting up your startup journal setup. Now find the start of the tape so we can see it. Ah, freaking out freaking out seriously why are you so challenging this is why we don't live unbox things <laughs> ah hello cindy thank you for being here for your first live stream where is the washi tape shop that is great i don't know because anytime i get an order from them it comes from auckland so i feel like they must have something in auckland that they they like oh guys guys <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I think that they ha they must have places around the place. Places around the place? Shipment places around the place? I don't know. Can't tell you. Um, so you can see that it has uh, little kind of labels for the different months of the year and stuff. I will say that it is a little bit of a shame, as somebody who lives in the Southern Hemisphere, that this is March and it says Spring Mood. Uh, I probably have to just change the teacups around or whatnot. But this one has April on the cup rather than as a label. So we'll, we'll have a scroll through and we'll, we'll have a look. So we've got Stay Warm for January, but it is technically separate, so you don't have to put them together. Uh, December is very much about kind of like presents and gingerbread. Uh, I love it. Um, yeah, distribution places. That's what I was thinking. Um, uh, November is very much, you know, like full vibes and whatnot. So this is more for a, um, what's the word? Northern Hemisphere audience, but still. Because the labels are separate, you can just switch things around, except for the ones that are like printed on the house. So let's see, because October is printed on put that there stick that down October is printed on the house just here you can see and then November isn't it just says tea time uh, full mood for September so you could just switch that with the spring ones that's fine August is stuck on here but it doesn't feel very like specifically uh, any given season but yeah <laughs> yeah the ultimate death of Jess by washi tape. She says in a very joking manner, <laughs> like Jess has a fine bill of health. That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I don't 
think my bill is that fine, but I don't think I'm on the cusp of like not being here anymore. <laughs> Hi, Beck. Glad you made it. Um, so yeah, oh, July and then June, and then I guess we're back to springtime here. Is that similar to what we had before? I think so. So the thing I will say with this is that obviously you get quite a lot of tape. You can see that that goes on for quite a while and has quite a role, but I don't know how many of the kind of like April teacup I'm going to need. So it might be the kind of thing that I have to cut this up and like send it to people, you know, um, because I don't think that I'm going to need like six because there's probably six meters on here, six of the little teacup that says April. Cause I'll probably use it to like set up a calendar, uh, or a month, or a monthly. Yeah. could be a monthly. What am I thinking? Future log. Future log is the word that I'm thinking. Like you, oh, this would be so cute on a future log, guys. It'd be so cute. You just like put them in the corner as like decoration and you can have your little labels that have the months and stuff. And then you can just write out your mini calendars. <laughs> so cute. But yeah, we'll see. I think that I might have to cut some of these up and give them to some, give them to some peoples. The designs are gorgeous. I think that of the two, I probably prefer this guy more only because it's a little bit flexible in how you use it because uh, it is just effectively decorative. Uh, so it can be used for like startup journal setup, monthly setup, like whatever you want to use. Um, this guy though, it is very much kind of like calendar based. Uh, you could always take off the little um, cause you know, you cut each of these pieces out individually. Uh, you could just take out the little labels. The only issue would come for the ones where they are printed inside of the design, but yeah, it's, it's a cute idea. I like it. So we can roll this one back up and stick it down. So we have another two that look very related to each other. So those are these two and they've got little dress, little dresses on them. Very cute. Uh, so I'm interested to see what kind of designs go along with the dresses because I know it's not dresses the whole way down. We'll start with the, I don't know what color this is. <laughs> I'm going to say it's rose gold, even though I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, it would be fun, but just for one year. It's the kind of thing that I don't need to do six years in a row uh, of that. I mean, if you set up two journals in a year, then I guess it would only end up being three. But again, I probably don't need three years in a row of the same style for my future log. So it'd be kind of the thing that I'd, if, if I was purchasing it for myself, say, I would purchase it for myself with the assumption that I'm going in with a friend so that we could kind of have like matching calendars for the year. Ooh, <laughs> like, yeah, peachy. Peachy is a much better idea of what this kind of looks like. So we'll take off the paper. I try to do it away from the microphone so it doesn't sound too loud. So apologies uh, if, if any of the previous ones have been a little bit noisy. So we've got, oh, it's got like holographic foiling bits on it. I don't know if you can tell. We will get this little piece of tape off and we shall do the show and tells. And here we go. Pulling that off at the corner. And the listing calls this colorway neutral. I mean, I guess it's like, it's more neutral than blue, I guess. But this one is a wide tape and it has a range of different things on it. I don't know if you can see. Oh, it's going to be really hard to show you the kind of, opulence it's like a holographic shine to it it's not like it's not a foiling it's can you can you maybe just see that on the little teardroppy kind of shapes how it's got that like opalescent type thing i don't i don't know how to describe it but it's cute someone needs to get it and then offer it yeah like a pen pal exchange exactly like that like do a little washi swap but this one's, it feels very like, I don't know, princessy, whimsical kind of vibes. So we've got a little like pony carousel thing and we've got the little dressy dress and a little florally bits and another little kind of like pony tar carousel type thing, which is pretty cute. And I don't know, very princess vibes. What's that movie? Is it called like the princess and the pauper? Yeah, like iridescence. Princess and the pauper or something like that. It's the Barbie movie. This, this reminds me of the Barbie movie. <laughs> Because we've got the ones that are in the peachy kind of tones. Uh, and then we've got, ooh, an, a vintage style phone. And then we've got the blue ones. There we go. So that looks kind of cute. And we've got some more. There we go. whole bunch of, like, roses, floral designs. 
whole bunch of carousel-esque kind of things. But again, we have like a whole bunch of elements, which means that it's very good to be used for a monthly theme, monthly setup. That's mainly what I do with these kind of things. Yeah, there we go. Because of you, you finally broke down. Oh, yeah, excellent. Well, I hope that your package arrives uh, quickly. Okay, we do have two different dresses. We've got this one, which is very, like, you know, puffy sleeves, cute, cute. And then all the way back here, scroll, 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 scroll. We have that that kind of dress there with the more, I don't know, streamlined sleeves with the bow on the front. Ooh. <laughs> it's really hard to do this because it's quite a long design. It's probably about a meter, typically speaking. Oh, look, and another dress fancy very cute um typically these designs are about a meter long uh and then you get like a repeat of six yeah i think we're back to the start now and my arms are getting very sore because i'm holding them out like a like a small bird yeah this would be kind of fun for a wedding journal i think that like if i end up making a wedding journal because i was planning on doing one but i haven't gotten to it oh my gosh yeah like total bridgerton theme very cute um i would like my aesthetic elements of my wedding journal to kind of be in my wedding color palette and that's why I never got to making a wedding journal because I haven't picked a color palette because I've desired decided like literally nothing about my wedding <laughs> yeah if you weren't aware like if, if if you're maybe newer to the team I am engaged to my fiance Vogel his actual name's Vaughn we call him Vogel um We've been engaged for a hot minute uh, because neither of us is super inclined to plan a wedding. <laughs> we'll get married eventually, one day, possibly. Yeah, like a princess theme, that kind of thing. Because like, it, it all feels very kind of like whimsically princessy vibes. It's pretty. I like it. We've got like a tiara and like little bits and pieces too. So it's cute. So that one's the peachy toned one, or like as they said on the website, neutral. Uh, which again, like it's more neutral than blue, so we'll give it to them. And it's got that iridescence kind of shine to it, which is very hard to show on camera, but it's pretty. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, no rush. It's only been like three years or something, something like that. So the other one we have is a blue colorway, and it's probably fairly similar in terms of what we've got, but I think that instead of, at least based on the packaging, I don't know, can you see? Can you see it? Sorry about the ugly finger. Um, hot air balloons rather than ponies and carousels, possibly. Yeah, just elope. That's like the temptation right now. I am tempted just to do the eloping kind of thing. Um, I don't know. My mind keeps flip-flopping between the idea of eloping, the idea of having a giant party, and a whole bunch of other options. <laughs> mainly, mainly it's the eloping versus giant party that I'm kind of... Uh, flip-flopping between but we'll see it'll happen one day it's all good we've got time so I think that this colorway I do personally prefer to the other one just at a first glance having not even opened up the tape yet to see it but you can peel off that little piece that keeps it stuck down <laughs> so cute so okay we've got the we've got the pony again pony exists Alrighty, I feel lied to. Where is my hot air balloon? But it's cool. So it, it looks like it's very much a similar design, but just a different color. Let's see, I feel like I want to look at these side by side. I'm going to put you here for a second, my child. We're going to get this guy back out and we're going to have a have a sneaky peeky. Okie dokie, artichokey. We need to get to the same style of dress though. Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah, it looks pretty much exactly the same. Yeah? Which means I'm probably not going to scroll through the whole thing. But you can see that, like, we've got the book in both cases. We've got the same style of dress, just in different blue. But I also kind of like that in the sense that you can very much do, uh, like, mirror images and stuff like that if you're, you're doing it. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Sleeping Beauty. Like, where, where it's like, the dress is pink, the dress is blue. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a thing. This one obviously would need to be more pink to actually be that, but still, it, it's kind of cute. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, hmm, my first instinct is that I like the blue more, but I really like the combination of the peach and the green. I think the peach and green is actually a really nice color palette, but yeah. <laughs> So we'll put this guy back, and because it is, like, the same designs, we're not going to roll that one out fully. But, yeah. 
totally a Sleeping Beauty theme. Um, Vogel is the reason that you now drink tea too. Oh, excellent. <laughs> He's a spendy influencer. I'll let him know. <laughs> He's not here today. He's at work, like in the office at work, but I'll let him know when he comes home. So we can wrap those two up. Put those to the side. Yeah steampunk washi that'd be cool i would like a steampunk washi i don't think i have any steampunk washi um rolling it up rolling it up let's see the next one <laughs> do a good and evil theme because in my current journal which is underneath a keyboard over here in my current journal, the washi tape that I used for the start of journal setup was very much a kind of like, uh, what's the word? Not not good and evil, but it's like opposites kind of a thing. So you can see that on here we have like our little kind of moon fairy who's like holding the little crescent moon. And then we've got a little sun fairy on the other side, but they kind of mimic each other. So they're like facing other direction. They've both got their kind of like butterfly versus moth kind of thing. And so I put those on quite a few pages to, to mimic each other which I, th I just thought was kind of nice so you can do a similar thing with these two washi tapes in that they're like the same designs but different colors so yeah excellent excellent reminder thank you Britta also like yeah we need to we need to hydrate tink <sighs> hi Tina <laughs> I appreciate you giving us that reminder before you had to skedaddle. So our next one, we've got another two that are kind of, well, we've actually got a few more that are florally based, but these two are florally based. And I'm pretty sure that they have that kind of iridescence as well from memory. I mean, I haven't opened it up yet to see, but I think from what I saw on the website, it might be Ugh, pulling off the paper. There's one. And two. So I actually really, I'm not like, I'm not a fan of florals. Like I wouldn't consider myself to be a florally type person really. But having said that, there have been some floral tapes that they have done from the washi tape shop that I I think are absolutely gorgeous. Um, Because I said like before, um, that was not English, but we're going to pretend it was. Because they're on this PET stuff, when you cut them out and stick them into your journal, they blend in with the page really nicely. So it almost looks like you actually drew them yourself in your journal. I mean, absolutely no heckin' way that I could draw this. Uh, current skill set is not that high. <laughs> but it, it, it's a nice way to kind of almost like seamlessly, I suppose, put those, those designs into your journal. So you can see, hopefully... Um, it's going to be really hard to show you the iridescence on these. I really want to show you, though, because it's really freaking pretty. No, no, okay, we'll put this here. We'll lay this down. We'll see if I can kind of somehow maybe, like, use my phone or something. I don't know, with, like, a light. Does that... Not really. It doesn't really show up, does it? Oh, there you go. You can kind of see it in the little vein here, yeah? Can you see that little, like, rainbow-esque kind of part? So we've got little, like veins of this iridescence that go throughout the designs uh and it's just gorgeous <laughs> it's just gorgeous yeah well I'm glad that you think that my current skill set is terrific thank you I think that it's, it's not too bad I think it's just not at the level of being able to do this type of work but then I'm also not practicing those skills like I'm I'm not I'm not aiming to be able to do this so I would much rather just use a tape that has this that I can then stick into my journal because you know, I am all about making things easier, not harder, where possible. Because too often, Jess chooses the hard route for things. Oh, oh my gosh. I, it just doesn't show up as well on camera. But hopefully you can see that little rainbow shine. I'm a sucker for a rainbow. We know this. And that is super pretty. But it's effectively like where you would put line work if you were drawing these out that's where the little iridescent bits are 
Haha, <laughs> I found the sweet spot. I'm just going to do this for the rest of the stream. Okay, no, we're not going to do that for the rest of the stream. But it is very pretty. And I love I love that kind of coloration. But you can see that we have like a bunch of different little bits in here that you would cut around individually and stick into your notebook. Uh, so again, the design is quite long. It goes on for quite a while. You have quite a, a variation in terms of the different bits and pieces. Um, oftentimes what I end up doing is... Uh, like cutting pieces out and then half sticking it onto a page so that then I can line a page with this kind of decorative stuff. Let's see, do I have an example that is nearby? Uh, maybe. Please hold. Here we have mine currentist journal, or most recent one. <laughs> Don't go over to the shop. Stay safe. <laughs> so I'll usually put it in the corner and stuff. Like you can see that when it hits the light, it is shiny, but when you put it down, it's just like seamlessly blends, that kind of stuff. Uh, same idea with this one, like just put it along the top of the page and make little decorative pieces. And then the rest of the page is set up is really, really simple and straightforward. So it looks really pretty and decorative, but the actual effort expended to do that, much lower. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like in the corner, it hits the light, it's shiny, but when it's in the right way, it's just... Seamless blend. Same idea with stuff for, what's this month? August, it literally says at the top of the page. Uh, so this one was like a sunflower. I love the blue and yellow together. This isn't obviously part of the haul. This is just more like highlighting how you can utilize items. So these floral tapes in particular have a lot of standalone pieces as well, uh, as well as the kind of bunches, bouquet-esque kind of bits. But anywho, we'll part. Uh, can you put links to the tapes? Yes, after the live I will totally go in and make sure to update the description box to link specifically to the tapes that we're showing off here. Um, otherwise though, the ones that we're show showcasing are pretty much all in their new newest collection, if you're watching this close to the time of actually uh, um, having streamed this. Actually, what I will say, and I don't have it here, and I'm like a little bit sad about it, and thus also very tempted, they have some Halloween sets that they've come out with, and they look cute as heck, and I don't need them, but I want them so bad. Anywho, moving right along. So, yeah, I will go and update that for you, uh, but otherwise they should be in the newer releases. So, rolling these back up. The iridescence is so pretty. <laughs> Do you guys get cute aggression? Because I get cute aggression, like 100%. If you're not sure what cute aggression is, I'll give you an example, okay? And it's going to be a little bit, a little bit morbid, all right? So be prepared for this. Sometimes when I see a cute animal, and I'm not an animal person, right? Like I don't actually, I'm not really in, into animals all that much, anywho. But when I see like a really cute, like, puppy or something I'm just like oh I just want to hug you so much that I like smother you I'm not gonna do it obviously because that's a little bit that's a little bit deranged <laughs> but there's a part of me that's just like you're so cute that I just want to I get it to, I get it to Vogel sometimes as well which is a problem like I'll kind of you know he'll be sitting there at the table like eating his meal or something and I'm just like you're so cute that I just want to crush your head I'm like we can't do that though that's bad <laughs> But, but sometimes it's very much that. So the same idea with the tapes. I'm like, these tapes are so beautiful. I just want to crush them. But I'm not going to because I'd like to be able to use them. So we'll put those to the side and everything will be okay. We're going to be nice to our supplies. We're not going to crush our supplies. <laughs> Anywho. So in terms of the other tapes we have, we've got three... Uh, sets. I know this one in particular is not a new release, so we'll have a look at that one first. Let's push these out of the way. You're causing a shadow and you're making me worry. Um, yeah, I want to squeeze you till your eyes pop out. I'm glad that somebody else here gets it because, like, yeah, um, I never act on these intrusive thoughts, <laughs> but sometimes I'm just like, Jess, calm yourself. Anywho, so these I think is called like the waves of. Reber, Re Re Reuben, yeah, you're so cute. It's like the um, what is it? You're so it's so fluffy. I'm gonna die from Despicable Me. It's like that. I am that kid. So this one is a set of four tapes, and they they feel a little bit more eclectic. Um, and I do technically already have this one as well. Uh, but 
And they're all wave inspired. Uh, so we've got a black kind of wave one. I feel like I don't actually want to open these and I want to go and get the ones that I already have out and show you the ones that I've already opened <laughs> so that I don't have two sets of open tapes. Um, because I do, as I said, already have this one. Uh, let's see. Waves, waves, waves. This guy and there's a black one, that one, and that one. And I think there's one in particular that I put aside as one that I possibly didn't want to keep. So I might not actually have it anymore. So as you can see, uh, I have already utilized these ones before. <laughs> Thus, they're looking a little bit more naff compared to their very very sexy new compadres. So I'll put the sexy new compadres to the side. This one in particular I used to have, but I think I must have given it away. Uh, but we'll, we'll go and have a look at our tapes. So these ones are more kind of like your tra traditional washi tape. They're actual like washi. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can feel normal again for sure. It's all good. We understand. So this one has uh, like the little cranes and some gold foiling. You can see that gold foil. Very pretty. And then like the big red sun type thing. So I would use this type of a tape to kind of line the bottom edge of a page is how I would probably use it and have previously used it. That's quite cute. So that's one of the wave designs. Uh, I, I will say that I don't think that the tapes necessarily work super well together in a theme, but I can understand why they've been put together, if that makes sense. Uh, this one in particular, which is, <laughs> the, the sticker on this is not uh, having his, his best life being lived right now, uh, but this one in particular is quite nice because it's that very, like, dark black uh, and, and gold. And I think black and gold is a great combination with each other. The sticker is not sticking. Go away. But you can kind of see the, the grey line work of the waves over the top of it. And then we've got that, like, super, super shiny gold foiling. So it's kind of like if the waves were at night and then little bits of the water are kind of reflecting off the moon. But the moon is gold, so the reflection is gold. I've used this one in Vogel's journal, I think, before. But this one's quite nice in the sense that it's a bit more neutral. It, feel, it feels... Anything black and gold just feels classy. It feels kind of elegant. It's got elegance. So that is one of the tapes. We'll wrap that one back up and attempt to stick that busted sticker back over the top of it. <laughs> there we go. Put that one there. And then we've got this one, which I think is quite pretty. This one's uh, got some kind of like, I guess you could say like cherry blossoms or like lotus blossoms or something. I don't know. They look like the ones from the animated version of Mulan, but they've got those kind of like little flowers in the waves with this kind of like blue and kind of teal kind of colorway. It's, it's a much softer palette and feels a lot more delicate compared to the uh, other tapes in the set. And that's why I would say that the tapes don't necessarily feel like they really go together, even though I can understand why they put them together. But that one's quite nice. It has a much softer, softer colour palette. So, as I said, though, these win wins, these wins, they're not actually new releases. They are an older set from the washi tape shop, but... Given that they've sent it to me, I assume that they still have some. And then this is the one that I didn't keep from my original set. I think I gave it away. But this is the one that reminds me very much of that Great Wave painting. Like, it feels like that Great Wave painting. <laughs> and this one has silver foiling over the top of it and the little kind of red sun. I guess it's a sun. Ooh, that, that part, this part here, that's really nice. I don't know why it reminds me of like the underside of a mushroom, <laughs> even though they're waves, but that's kind of cool. So again, I would probably use this to line the bottom edge of a page, but I love the, the like, <sighs> anytime I see people draw this, they make it look really easy. And then I try and draw it and it looks weird. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I can probably say that story to a lot of things that happen in, in life in general, but anyhow trying to draw something and it just turns out looking real whack. So we'll put those guys to the side. And then we have the two that I do not have before. Do not have before? Do not already have. We'll grab this one out first. So these two are both sets as well. So we have multiple 
tapes in them. I haven't looked on the website to see what's actually in them, so I'm going to be just as surprised as you. Yay! Okay, so you've got a washi tape shop supplier in Australia. Nice. Rip, 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 rip. Ooh. Foiling. Give me the tape. Wow. That is gold. Oh, shiny. All right, put that to the side. That's cute. So in this set, we have five separate tapes. Ooh, on black. I like on black. Five separate tapes in this one, because these two are two separate ones. I like this one. I'm not going to open it up. Um, I'll just show you the outside. But it's got this kind of like floral trim gold pattern on it, which is very shiny, very pretty. And then we've got this guy here, which looks more like a page runner. So I'd probably be inclined to put that down the side of a page, but it's got this kind of like botanical branching thing. And then this kind of like lacy almost trim, which is quite pretty. Again, in that beautifully shiny gold. And then we've got these two, which kind of look like cousins. So they kind of look like, they look like scrapbooking paper, honestly. They're not, but eh. we will open this one up and have a, have a snoop. Because these two are kind of more like a repeating pattern, thus they're not opening it. But this one, you've got like some stamps and some little kind of like gold ink spatter type things. And another type of little postage stamp some little florals. It's very decorative, very delicate and pretty, which is kind of nice. I think that this would look kind of cute in like, if you're going with like light academia, floral vibes, reading journal-esque type thing, I think that that, it, it fits the vibe. It's cute. Um, and then you've got, it's what, like dark academic compadre, like light. Like when I say light academia, I mean kind of like the colorway and general feeling. Obviously there's not a lot of like bookish elements or anything on this. If you're thinking like academics in terms of reading, but still. And then we've got the dark colorway, which has like a hummingbird on it, which is kind of cute. But we'll open this one up and have a look at the design as well. I never know which direction to open them in because I like to try and open it so that then it's still stuck on the end of the tape like this. But I often uh, estimate wrong. <laughs> like, so we'll put that here. That looks cute. We've got some little little rosy bits. The contrast between the gold and the black and the pale peach is like the level of contrast I like, but I don't know how, what's the word? I don't know if I necessarily gravitate specifically towards using this tape in particular, because if I'm wanting something that's kind of like dark and punchy, like black, I'm probably not going to pair it with a pale pink. Does that make sense? It's cute though. I'm not sad about it. I like the hummingbirds. I think that they look they look pretty swell. Um, and then the last tape in the set for this set of tape. <laughs> there we go. We'll put those ones over here. I have so many washies and I really need to do another declutter. But that's not a today job. <laughs> today we're just talking about how I have a problem with having too much <laughs> in terms of stationery. But, oh, okay, this one I like a lot more. So the gold and the kind of green, but it's like that really pale green. I like this one. I think it's quite cute. I don't know if, know if I'm necessarily sold on the outlining of the roses. I feel like I'd probably want them to just be like, I don't know, not outlined. I don't know what the word is, unoutlined. But I think that the, the combination of this gold and this green is very nice. So that looks pretty cute. I think that of the sets that we've got, this one is probably the one that I'd be the most likely, like if I was doing a kind of like a giving away washies, this set is probably one that I'd be more likely to give away compared to others. Just because like we said, I'm not really into florals and the florals that I am into are the ones that are on the PET that you can kind of stick down into the journal and it makes it look kind of seamless. But still, let's see. Do you try and match the washi and stickers to the journal cover? Not necessarily, not so much. Um, to me, the journal cover only matters to the extent of like not even necessarily like do I like it but more is like can I tolerate it <laughs> which sounds really bad right and it's when I purchase a journal oftentimes I'm not thinking like can I tolerate this I, I do pick ones that I actually genuinely like but when it comes to doing my my notebook rainbow for instance I uh 
I, I pick those very much based on color rather than emblem. Um, it, yeah, there's a like it's, a, it's this weird kind of combination of considerations that goes into it. When I'm picking a journal for my everyday use, it needs to be a cover that I do like. Um, but when I'm picking a cover for my R and D journal, it's very much a can I tolerate this for being an R and D journal. Often when I um, try and match washi and stickers, I'm matching it to an overall theme that I'm trying to do for that setup specifically, rather than to the journal cover, if that makes sense. So for instance, in my current journal, like it has a little, you know, moon stars on the front cover, but I didn't go into setting up this journal with this washi tape based on that idea. It was just kind of a happy accident that it turned out that it had uh, moons and, and stars in it. I know that some people like to theme their starter journal setup based on the emblem cover, which I think is quite cute. Like when we had the, uh, the, the fireflies come out from Artra and Olive, you had a lot of people who were doing like firefly or kind of bug inspired setups in their starter journal setup, which I thought was kind of cute. Uh, but that's not something that I typically do. Oh, hello, Mr. Lenny. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. So, on to this one, which is interestingly a set of a whole bunch of different stickery bits, it seems. So, while previously with the PET tapes that we looked at, we didn't have them as stickers, but they were standalone elements where you had to kind of cut out individual elements to use them these ones are already i don't know if you can see there's that like faint line around the outside because this is actually a sticker it'll probably be blue Arr! <laughs> blue joe so let's see if i can get this off yeah there we go eh. so you can see that this actually peels off as an individual sticker uh whereas the last ones did not and you'd have to cut them out yourself so we've got a an interesting eclectic bunch here of different bits and pieces that's quite cute let's see this one says sunday weekend to-do list all right let's see we'll go through the orangey kind of one first because they've all got like a slight colorway but let's see you got here for a live yay so these ones are all stickers and we've just got a kind of interesting mix of things that are functional like a task list label and ones that are just a bit more decorative like a little kind of stampy bit or elysian beautiful or creative oh nice flowery stuff little stampy kind of bit i think that these ones will probably end up getting used in my reading journal at some stage and then some days of the week like a header for if you were doing some kind of a uh, Maybe like a little mini calendar or a habit tracker or something. That's kind of cute. So those are the orange ones. <laughs> Jess. Oh, oh, it's okay. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm actually hungry. I can hear my stomach doing the grrr. And I'm just like, dude, calm down. We're busy. We're, we're enjoying each other's company and stationary. So and that was the orangey kind of colored one. We then have a blue kind of palleted one, which is interesting. I do like the stickers from the washi tape shop. I used some of those in my reading journal in particular. Um, I feel like I need to show you now as I've mentioned them because they're so gorgeous. They're so gorgeous. Um, so it's a set, I think, of three or four rolls or five. I can't quite remember. But they all have a little bit of foiling on them and they're all this kind of like just very simple botanicals. And like, even though I'm not really a fan of botanicals, these were absolutely perfect to just like stick into different corners and whatever. And that's why there's so many gaps because I used so many of them. These were perfect. I love these. These ones, they're a little bit more eclectic. So they're not really as much my speed because when I have a set of tape stickers, I prefer them to be the kind of things that all work together very well. Uh, but yeah. There are some interesting pieces in here. I'll probably have to go pull some of them out. Let's see. Scrolling over. Scrolling. Scrolling. So this one has another little definition. We've got some little blue stamps. We've got a snowflake. Other little bits and pieces. Which is quite cute. What does that say? Winter mist. Makes sense. I feel like these might be loosely themed around seasons very loosely though so this one is more of our kind of like wintry themed one uh the only reason that i say this is because this one says spring melodies on it so i'm like okay well there's your spring tape 
<laughs> what was the orange? Would that have been the... I don't know. It's like got flowers on it more than it has. It didn't say anything about autumn, so hmm, shrug, shrug. Let's have a look at the spring one. So when you pull the uh, initial piece of tape off of these ones, you do have to be careful because they're stickers. Uh, sometimes you pull up. You can probably see it happening here. See how it's pulling up a sticker with it? So I have to be a little bit careful. It can be a little bit tricky to get them to stay down when you're pulling stuff up, but eh. Yeah. There we go. I mean, it's going to be fine. So this one is more of a kind of pink colorway. So we've got spring melodies. The, the little piece of music there is pretty cute. <laughs> and we've got some florally bits, some little stampy kind of stuff. So it's all kind of like in a similar vein for each of them, just a little bit, uh, just a little bit different in terms of like which florals we're kind of focusing on, which kind of labels you get given, and the general color palette. There we go. <laughs> Catch the rest as an after party fair. Let's see. Question: Do you bullet journal every day, or do you miss some days? Um, I depends. Most of, I try to. I try to use my bullet journal every day, but it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Um, you know, some days I just don't have a lot to write down, so I don't end up jumping into it. Some days I'm busy. Some days I'm sick. You know, uh, I think what's more important than using it every day is coming back to it consistently. I guess. Um, so if there is a day that I'm just going to end up pulling this sticker off. I'm sorry, tiny sticker. I tried. But you can see how they kind of pull off. Like it's a little piece of, little piece, little, little sticker kind of a thing. And we can stick it down on something. This one is not going back onto the, back onto the roll. So we'll just, <laughs> we'll stick that down there. It's kind of cute. So with the, paper backing you can kind of see how it has an outline but it's not it's not a uh, shiny finish so it still blends it still blends but yeah I think that coming back to it is is kind of important is that like an idea of um if you do we'll take we'll take exercise as an example because it's just like an easy example so if you're trying to build an exercise habit and like you do three days and you've done your exercise, like, you know, you're, you're 20 minutes, half an hour, like whatever it is. And then you get to your fourth day and you skip for some reason, like, you know, maybe it's a rest day or maybe something came up and you couldn't get to it or like whatever. That's fine. But the most important thing that you can do is get back into it the next day. Because if you have two days in a row of not having done it, now you're starting a new habit of not exercising. Does that kind of make sense? So for me, I do try wherever possible to make sure that I'm coming back to it as soon as possible so that then I can continue to build that habit of consistent journal use and that kind of makes sense but yes totally days that I skip 100% for sure so this one says eternal summer so I guess this is our little kind of summer-esque kind of set in the green colorway with like some olives and some Japanese Chinese those are the days of the week yeah days of the week in Japanese uh, we've got important little florally bits, little stampy bits, etc., etc. Looking pretty cute. Uh, you made it. You just got back from work. Oh, it's 6.30 p.m. in Ohio. Nice. It is 10.30 a.m. on Thursday here in New Zealand. And the last one that we've got for this set is the kind of black and purple. I'm not sure what colorway we've got here because some parts of it are very dark and some parts of it are purpley. So... We've got, again, ooh, that's nice. We've got a full set all at once. I like that. So the days of the week, some little purple flowers, a little gritty bit, stampy bit, other little pieces, and then we're on to the repeat for it. Nice. There we go. Those olive ones would be good for a food journal. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, like kitchen kind of esque vibes and whatnot at least that's that's the kind of thing it gives me it, it's also possibly because uh Vogel's mum I think had a set of dinner plates that had like olive decoration like painted olives and that's kind of what it reminds me of but anywho so for the washi tape shop we had this set here which were the washi stickers in the various kind of colors with a mix of decorative and functional we had this set here which was kind of like foiled florals parchmenty kind of things we had this set here which were the waves in different 
styles i suppose so varying from kind of like pretty pastel kind of thing to a very dark sinister waves okay not that sinister but still stop this what are you where are you going we're we're trying to film here oh my god rude you just can't get good help anymore get your get your butt back in line anywho so those sets we then had the two different styles of the florals so these were two separate tapes so we had the blue colorway and the pink colorway with the kind of iridescent shine very cute we had the two different styles of the dresses like the kind of carousels dresses like roses all of that kind of thing Jess as Jess a Lena desk. What? Lena like skinnier or Lena is an on a lean? I think it's more just the fact that the tape is uh weighted on a certain side and has no chill. You rude tape, come along. Come along. Because I mean like if I turn you around, do you do the same in the other direction? Yeah, you start okay, you're kind of off screen, but anyhow. <laughs> We'll put that there, it's fine. I have a solution. We had these two guys here though, which was one that had the different months of the year and one that had the kind of just, just the decorative houses, kind of blue and tan colorway. So pretty. And we have the coffee set. All right. So that's all good. Yes, we can wave goodbye to the washi. Get out of here. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Come back. <laughs> I need to go put you somewhere safe, but I will endeavor to have all of the, uh, all of the different sets linked below. But up next, because I told you this is not a small haul. This is a big haul. It's it's a it's a mega haul. All right. I need to find something to put these washi tapes in though. Uh, crickets. We're gonna just steal the sub box box. <laughs> We're gonna put it in the sub box box. <laughs> there we go. We'll just we'll just put these all nice and gently. She lied. It's not so gentle. But into this box. There we go. There we go. There we go. So that we can get on to the next part of our hauling. Yay! Stupid online shopping taking your attention. I hope they wasn't for candles. Yes, I know that wasn't real English, but I tried. Anyhow. So, I think it's about time. Dink! For a drink break. There we go. Better. So. Hmm. What do we have next? We can either do more washi tape-esque stuff or we can move on to other stationary bits first. We've got stationary pal and then we've got journal say. Now do I remember which pieces came from which one? <laughs> Alrighty, you guys, you guys get to vote on this. All right, this is this is the poll. Okay, do we do stationary pal first, or do we do journal say first? I think those are. Oh no, wait, I've got another option. Or do we do oops a daisy? Because <laughs> I've, I've got quite a few. Up next, question mark. And we're going to use this as the official ordering for the rest of the items that we had. Okay, so we've got some stuff from Journal Say, we've got some stuff from Oopsie Daisy, and we've got some stuff from Stationery Pal. And as part of this, I need to remember which items came from which ones, <laughs> which is really where the challenge lies. Uh, let's see, I think I can possibly go find, a, find an email about it somewhere, maybe. Shrug. Oh gosh. I don't think I've saved it anywhere good. Let's see, you're from Okay, that, that looks good. Okay, we've got the we've got the poll going. Ooh, ooh, it's contentious. Stationary pals in the lead, but only barely on 41%. We have 32 votes, now we have 33. It's bumped up to 42%. Now stationary pals still in the lead. Journal say is running up in the rear. Oops a daisy holding steady with a good 32%, 30%, 32%, 30%. Keeps changing because people keep voting. Make sure that you get your votes in quickly because we need to keep on rolling with this steam train of a stationary haul. I would make for a terrible auctioneer. I really would. <laughs> Like, I don't think I would make a good one because I really can't speak that fast and still make sense. <laughs> but, yes. So, let's see. I'm going to give you all of about 10 more seconds to vote on the poll while I figure out which pieces came from which places. 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five, four, three, two, and one. Alrighty, it does seem that stationary pal was in the lead at the time of ending the poll. All right. So, stationary pal first, then we will have Oops and Daisy, then we will have journals. <laughs> you get better auction in than yeah. I think it's only because I half know what I'm trying to say, but still. Yeah, and coming around the corner is. Okay, so in terms of my order from Stationery Pal, what I was very much trying to do with this one in particular was pick out items that I don't think everybody kind of has. So it is a little bit more of an eclectic kind of bunch and it is like a, kind of a bunch of like almost random stuff. So one of the first things that I picked out was this <laughs> like protractor. It's not, is it a protractor? Protractor? Compass whatever. It's a circle stencil, but I just like the fact that it is it is a big circle itself, which is kind of cool. And it's got all of the different degrees on it. So you can use it to section out, you know, different spacing and whatever, you know, if you're doing like a circular style calendar or whatnot. Uh, and then it's got all of these little circles in the middle. So it's just like a, a nifty little kind of circle stencil for people who don't want to spend a pretty penny on the, uh, name Stetler one that I've got the green one this one's a little bit more compact so you can kind of take it with you and it's got the various sizes which is kind of nice circle stencils are absolutely great though they are so good for such a range of different themes which I really appreciate like typical ones that I like to do it for are things like space themes because you know planets moons that kind of thing you can also do it for things like bubble themes you could do it for things like fruits even like if you want just like perfectly round oranges <laughs> like there's just a lot of variation of what you could do with this type of thing so that's why I nabbed one of these so that's one um like I said with the different degrees measurements it means that if you're trying to divide it up in terms of like equal spacing provided you're okay with doing the math of like 360 divided by however many spaces you can go and plot that out so that's kind of nice I also then wanted to get a different type of circular stencil, but this one has a kind of um, space in the middle that moves. You can kind of see that that moves around. So you can kind of, in theory, put it down on your page and then put your pen in and then uh, make a circle that way. It's not as fancy as the Helix Circle Maker, uh, but it is cheaper. And it also comes with the uh, centimeter measurements on the side. So you've got like an 11 by 11 square, no, 12 by 12 square, uh, which fits really nicely into an A5 journal as well. So we nab open an A5 journal. Yeah, they can be a little bit tricky to use. I find that I typically will do it in pencil and I try to go around quite a few times to try and make it as even as possible. But this guy, in terms of like a, a square, stencil it's quite nice so you can put it in like that you go like measure things out on the side which is kind of cute and then it's got a variety of different line shapes and whatever and it's got your circle stencil pieces as well but then it's also got ovals in the middle too if you want ovals so while this one is just for circles this one has other stuff too which can be kind of useful so this is more like a combo tool in terms of the circles on this, it doesn't rotate as nicely as the Helix does. I don't think I have a pen nearby that would be useful for this. I also don't think I necessarily want to do it in this nice notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Maths is not that bad. I believe in you. You can do the thing. Uh, let's see. So. I don't think this is going to work particularly well on here. Because I don't know if this pen is actually big enough for it. Eh. There we go. See, there's one, and then... Ah! Drop my pen lid. There's another, and then... Eh. Ah, oh, this pen is not good for this. There's another. You see how you make your little kind of concentric rings? Um, it's kind of... It's just... It's a little bit cute. It's not as good as the Helix, but it, it's for a cheaper alternative. Not bad. So, we got that. We also nabbed some washi tape holders. So they're kind of like little rolls that you can use to uh, feed your washi tape onto and then dispense them and such. Because I don't have a convenient way to cut my washi tape. <laughs> so I 
thought I'd nab one of this to kind of like show it off a little bit. So it's just a little kind of organizer for your washi and you can just take the side of this out and uh, feed your washi tape rolls onto this. And then it's got the serrated edge so that you can cut the washi tape as well, which is nice. So how do we get this out? We turn it and feed it. And then we grab all the washi tapes that we had from before. <laughs> I'll just put one on and I'll put like a crappy tape on. So you then take your little tape roll, just feed it through and then put that back in the other side and twist to lock it in place so that then you can dispense your tape on the little tape roller, which is kind of kind of nice. And it's fairly large, so you can use quite large tapes on it too, which is pretty cool. I um I got two of them though because these are stackable as well. So it's like you can use them to kind of organize your tapes as well as dispense your tapes, which I thought was pretty nifty. So we'll chuck that over there. Yeah. Put this one over here. So you can see it's got like these little kind of feed feet. I don't know. Can, can you see the little feed feet? Barely. It's plastic and it's see-through. <laughs> but it then just in theory sits on top. Ta-da! Dee 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 dee. Which you can't really tell, but dee 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 dee. So they, they can just sit there as little like desk organizers. You can just like feed your little tapes out, which I thought was pretty cute. Um, so if, if I was going to be organizing my washi tapes in such a way, I would probably have collections of tapes in each of them. So either by like color or by type or by way that I like to use them type of a thing. So maybe all of the tapes that I typically like to use in my reading journal would go in one of them. Or all of my red tapes would go in one. All of my orange tapes would go in another. You can kind of make yourself like a little just tape tower by buying them and stacking them on top of each other, which I thought was pretty nifty. Anywho, so that was another item that we got from that, which is pretty swell. Then I also nabbed some of the zebra click art pens. Um, okay, so what happened with this this haul is that the station the stationary pal persons, the good folks of stationary pal, said, "Hey Jess, like." We want to send you some items, go to our website and pick out um, a certain amount of things up to this dollar amount. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. We can, we can do that. I didn't realize that mine was set to New Zealand dollars rather than US dollars. So when I picked all my items up to the amount, they're like, oh, do you want some more? Like you're way under the the price, but it didn't click to me that I was in the wrong currency. So I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't think that I need any more stuff stuff but like if you want to chuck on a pack of these pens that's fine it wasn't until after the fact that I realized that I was in the wrong currency but yes so we have some zebra click arts which are just like markers <laughs> click click which are kind of cute so we'll do we'll do a little swatch I can't remember where that was sitting I think it was there roughly but we'll get our get our little piece of paper back do some do some swatchings I uh yeah I have these just sitting on my floor in in a box on my floor <laughs> for a while being like I really need to do like a, a whole video for these but they're like a marker but they've got a fairly fine tip they're not a, a super thick tip could also be the fact that they are new I like that they click though it feels very satisfying <laughs> there's also on the side here a little hole which when you click or unclick it goes from black to red which I think is quite interesting so it's like you know when the pen is clicked but at the same time like you just look at the end of the pen and be able to see that it was clicked that's a nice little palette so these ones are the kind of pastel colorway I know that they have a couple of other ones but this was the one that was available at the time so I was like oh yeah we can we can chuck those on I'm always interested in trying new pens there we go Whee! the order is on the bottom of the packet wait what Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Good job. <laughs> My bad. That one's supposed to be there. I was like, what are you talking about? I thought you meant like the items that I'd ordered in the, uh, in the hole. I'm like, I don't think I still have the packet. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That's a cute little kind of coffee color. But these are quite nice. I think that they would make for good, um, header designs you know the type of header I don't think people do them quite as much anymore but they used to be quite popular where you would write block letters uh with a lighter color in the back and then you would go over the top with cursive either with the same word or a slightly different word um I'll see if I can show you what I mean I just need to grab a pen out 
after we finish doing our little color swatching scribbles, which are kind of going on a weird lean here, but you know, at least they're on the page. <laughs> so here's our little, our little swatch. You can see that they are very kind of pastel. Like this guy is like blending in quite well. I promise he is a little bit more punchy in person than he is on camera, but it's kind of a little cute little pastelish gradient. But the thing I was talking about, it was like people would write in the background, like maybe the word habit and then over the top using a black pen of some description where's my little pen from before they would write in cursive like tracker c k e r and they'd probably do a neater job than i've done here and they'd probably space it out a little bit better so that you can see the word habit a little bit better um, so th these pens, these click art pens in this colorway kind of feels like this, which used to be quite common. Uh, I'm letting you do it every day. That's nice. Yeah, it's kind of, it just like makes it a little bit special. Um, people would also do it with the same word as well. Like they do habit and then habit. Habit. And then over the top, do the cursive. With habit. So it's kind of like a drop shadow almost, but the drop shadow is in a different font. <laughs> but it's kind of cute. Yeah. So those are the click art pens. Uh, I see one of the reasons why I hadn't originally added them to the order is like, I don't want to start collecting more pens because I probably don't need them. She says probably, like she doesn't know that she definitely does not need more pens, but she's trying to give herself a little bit of grace. Um, I know that the calligraphs are my current weakness in terms of a pen kind of line, I guess, that I'm collecting. Um, so I don't really want to add the click arts to that as well, but I got them because, you know, they were sending them to me, so why not? It's a cute little, it's a cute little color palette. I like the pastel vibes. I'm not really a super pastel person, but it's cute. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. I'm glad that you think that my cursive is looking pretty good. So another one of the tools that I got from Stationary Pal was this guy here. You might have seen him in a recent video. He's kind of hard to show you from the side, but he is a uh, paintbrush word paintbrush cleaner kind of thing. So this little cartridge here like comes off on the side. So you pull this top part off. Ugh with not so much difficulty. I mean, enough difficulty to create a seal, right? So this one you fill up with water. You then put this on top and press it down so that it's secure. And then very carefully feed it into the top part here. Okay. Like that somehow, eh, which I can't do because I am on a really weird angle here. But effectively what you do is you feed this hexagon into the top part like that. Thank you. Eh. I promise you it's actually not as hard as I'm making it look. I am just constantly struggle bus. But anyways. So what happens then is that based on the way this is attached and kind of thing, it fills this little pool with a small amount of water. Okay. Uh, so then that, yeah, it's literally like a painting toilet. It's, it's actually kind of nifty though. So it fills this part with water so that then you can like, you know, get your paintbrush and just like wash it off and whatnot. And then once you wash it off, you just press this down. And then it releases the water. I don't know if you can see that it's like opening up that seal there. But it opens up the seal, releases the water. And then once you put this back up, it then just sections out another piece of water. Which is really cool. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. It's like, it's, it's one of those things that like, I don't need it. Because I do not paint. But... If you are a painter, and if you are the kind of person who likes to use many, many colors at once, but don't want to dirty your water stock, it's actually fairly nifty. One of the things that I will say is that if you end up purchasing this thing is that you need a screwdriver, all right? So if we look on the underside of this, uh, cause it comes like separated, I suppose, like this is separate from that, this part is separate. Underneath there's this little lever so when you press down on the little button, it pushes against that, which releases the seal, which lets the water come through. And then the water just collects in this tray at the bottom. So you eventually have to like, you know, empty it out. 
this little screw piece here though you have to screw in yourself so you do need to have a screwdriver and that is how <laughs> I ended up breaking <laughs> the tip of my exacto knife because I was too lazy to go downstairs and get a screwdriver so I thought oh yeah I can use this it'll be fine it was not fine don't do that go and get the screwdriver save yourself the hassle it's one of those things right like I'm like oh I'm too lazy to go downstairs and do the thing I'm sure I have a tool here that will let me do it and I'm like it would just take you less time and energy to go and get the damn screwdriver but this is a lesson that I'm going to have to continue to learn over many years, it seems, because I'm always that person. <laughs> Anywho, so we take this, we feed it into the top, it empties into there just a little bit, rinse off your brush, press it down, it'll filter it away, and then it'll fill it up with plain water. It's very cute. So that is a nifty tool. As I said, like this, this haul that I got from Stationery Power was very much about the idea of things that people don't typically have. Or in part things that I don't have. So I got myself a Uniball Jetstream. I think it is. Is it a U yeah, Uni Jetstream pen? Because I didn't have one. And I like to have a range of black pens. And I think that this is a pen that a lot of people like. So I nabbed one. Uh, but I also got, which is a new to me thing. And it's very cool. It's a combo pen. Like a multi pen, right? So it's got like a black cartridge for black pen ink. And then a red cartridge for red pen ink. But what it also has is a mechanical pencil nib. So... You can have a mechanical pencil and your regular writing pen. So if you only want to take out one utensil, but you want to be able to write stuff in pen and pencil. Ta-da! It's, it's not too bad. It's pretty cute. I think this one was from... I want to say Zebra, but I'm not sure. It's a Blen, whatever it is. And I, I think that, yeah, this is just a really cool idea. The idea of having a, like a multi-pen that has a pencil tip in it is cool. Because in my mind, I'm like, you can't have a pencil with it because it needs to be in a straight line. But obviously they've designed it in such a way that it actually works, which I think is very cool. So I nabbed myself one of those because that is a nifty tool. What else do we grab? So this guy here is a circle cutter. Uh, so the idea is that you have this central piece, which you stick at the center and you hold it down. And then this part, you can change where the blade is sitting by, I think you screw it or unscrew it so that then it can move. So you unscrew it. It has like a little measurement on the side so you can see how big the thing is going to be. So like, I don't know, six centimeters. And then you just like screw it in eh, carefully so that then it's locked in place. Ta-da! And then you can hold it in here and it pivots and it'll cut the circle out. So obviously there's a little blade on the bottom here, which they have a little piece of protective something on. What's this called? I don't know, plastic? <laughs> a little protective cap on it because you don't really wanna cut up your desk with this tiny knife aggressive much. Um, but you can use that to cut out circles of paper, which I thought was very cool. What I thought you possibly could use it for is cutting out a circle like um, like a cutout window in your journal or something, but you'd have to be very careful about how you do it. Also, because this is you know longer than the actual journal, once you put it in the middle, whee, uh, you'd have to be very mindful of like not getting it caught on the other edge of your of your journal or whatever and stuff. But cutting out pieces of paper in different sizes in circular amounts is cool. I also like the fact that oh, rude, it has inches on one side and centimeters on the other. So again, a nifty tool that I didn't think that everybody had. So I, I nabbed myself one of those. What else did we have? I need to go check the check the order list because some of the items I have gotten excited about and put away. <laughs> but um, okay, so we had the little compass, which was cool. We have, okay, my new pencil case. I actually got from them as part of this as well. So this is one of those pencil cases. Didn't come with a ruler. This is one of those pencil cases that's extendable. Uh, because I, I'm just like a sucker for pencil cases. My, okay, my two weaknesses are pencil cases and notebooks. So this pencil case here is one of those ones that you can kind of unzip the side and make it bigger, uh, so that it can carry more stuff. <laughs> Do I need it to carry more stuff? Probably not. Um, but at the moment I've just kept it in the, in the shallow version. But I like the idea of it being 
you know, it can grow with your, your stash. If you've got quite a few items that you're trying to hold onto at any one time, you can make it bigger. Or if you've only got a little bit, then it's not so bad. You can make it a little bit. Yes, Monica, another pencil case. Because I have no chill. Oh, I just hit my sore thumb on, on the side of the pencil case. And now it's sore again. Ow. But if we open up and have a look at the inside. So obviously there's like a little pocket on the front and you can kind of like you know store your ruler in there or like whatever else like just kind of cute and then on the inside it has a little zippy pocket which is cool you can stash some stuff in there um i'm using this to store my pens that i did for my start of journal setup so that i know which colors i was using so i've got a little pocket for the tombos and notably it actually fits the tombos in it which is excellent and then i've got some dot markers sitting in here but at the moment it's all kind of like scrunched up on the side because it's on the kind of thin version if we unzip it and, and extend that out then it gets a bit bigger a bit deeper but cute little pencil case love that so that's my new current one that i'm you know actually using at the moment along with this guy which was from wish he's not part of the haul he's just he's just my current pencil case that i've been using as well I'll put that to the side so We'll put those ones over there. Another item that I got from this part of the haul. Okay, so I also got myself a large pencil case of stuff. Where did I put it? This is the problem, guys. I I like pencil cases too much, so I buy way too many of them, and then I forget where I put them. Dang it! <laughs> I'm gonna have to go on a hunt. But not, not a long hunt. Maybe I can just tell you that there was indeed another pencil case and it did exist and now it's gone to somewhere. So it's part of my, uh, oh no, I, I put stuff in. There you are, there you are. I knew you existed somewhere. So that one actually wasn't part of this one. This was part of the journal say one, so I can't even show it to you yet. It was just because I was in that pencil case was storing some of the other items that I got, but I've recently remembered that I put them in other places. So one of the other things that I got from this part from Stationery Pal was a glue pen, which I'd heard about before. Um, and then when they said like, hey, we'll send you some stuff. I'm like, yes, this is an item that people need to know about. So I will nab one. So it looks like a white gel pen, but this isn't white gel ink. This is glue. So if you have something that's quite delicate and fiddly type of a thing that you can't necessarily use a glue stick on or can't, you know, use double-sided tape on or whatnot, you just write on the back of it with the glue pen and then stick it to your page, which is cool as heck. Um, so it just works like a typical ballpoint pen, but it's full of glue. So that's pretty cool. Another little piece that I got from it was a kneadable eraser which you can see that it literally just looks like a lump of blue tack, but I promise you it isn't. Um, so, I mean, Monica, you're asking the question about how does it stay wet in there? I mean, how does pen ink stay wet in its cartridge? <laughs> like, probably in a similar way. I assume that it's uh, not exposed to the elements and there's probably not, like, an air pocket in there or something, because, yeah, if you had an air pocket in there, I assume it would dry out. Um, so this is a kneadable eraser. This one's from Papa Castell. That's also something that I got in my little haul. Um, I've only used a nubbin of it and then I stuck it back on so that then they were all together. But that's pretty cool. I like this. Um, put that one to the side. But yeah, we like the glue pen. We like the kneadable eraser. Both are very cool. I think that was all that I got from this part of the haul. I think I also got a tape runner, but it's a tape runner. Like, I'm not I'm not going to show you a tape runner. Um, mainly because I can't get it because there's stuff in front of the little drawer that I keep it in. So these were the very cool items that I got from my stationary pal part. And as said, I was very intentional about the idea of, like, I'm trying to find things that people don't typically have. So, like, the little brush cartridge what are we calling it the paintbrush toilet yeah <laughs> the paintbrush toilet um the glue pen the the like circular cutter which i just thought was very cool the the pen the multi pen that has a pencil which i think is very nifty and then the little washi tape dispensers that have little like the little stackable feet and that have the little kind of cut edge so that you don't have to use your scissors which i thought was very helpful so the next part i'm pretty sure that you guys said that the next part you wanted to see was the oopsie daisy stuff so joe at oopsie daisy was very nice to send me a kind of just like a bunch of stuff like i was very um 
I was like expecting maybe like a sheet of stickers or something. She's like, oh, I want to send you a couple things. I'm like, oh, that's really sweet. Yeah, no, for sure. I would love to. I would love to have some stuff from you because I can't say no to stuff. Uh, we know this about me. So she sent me some washi tapes and she sent me some more washi tapes and she sent me a pen and I'm just like trying to grab all of the stuff because it came in a, a nice little parcel, but then I ripped the parcel and so now everything is everywhere. There we go. There we go. Whole bunch of bits and pieces. So I'm not really too sure how to go through these in an order. Like we can probably do the tapes all at once, but I'll put those tapes over there. So we've got a mix of some functional bits and pieces, but then also some just more like decorative-esque kind of stuff. I don't think I've opened this part. I'll just open that up too. <laughs> but I haven't had anything from Oopsie Daisy before. I've seen them around on the interwebs. Um, so, you know, having her offer to send me some stuff, I'm like, heck yeah, I'll, che I'll check out your stuff. That's interesting to me. So in this one, we've got some little, little stickers. We've got a little gnome. It says, don't worry, be happy, but it's a bee. <laughs> So that's quite cute. And then that one is like, they see me rolling, they hating. I like the puns. They're quite cute. So we've got those two little stickers here, which is kind of nice. Uh, those ones we'll put here. So this pen is a Koi coloring brush pen, uh, which is, I don't know, a water-based ink, which is pretty cute. I don't have any other Koi brush pens, so I haven't tried this one out, but we'll, we'll have a look at the color because why not? Here we go. Let me... Ooh, that's a nice saturation. That's a nice yellow. It's a little bit more golden in person than it is on camera, but it looks pretty cute. You're doing sunflowers for 2024. Nice. Sunflowers is a really pretty theme. So as you can see from the little stash that we have to the side here, some of them are very much like related to each other kind of decorative bits. So we've got like go bananas and then little banana tabs and I can, <laughs> I can make you peel good. Wow. Suggestive banana much. Um, but these are like little, I don't know if I can, I'm going to pull it off so you can hopefully see it, but they're like a little tab so that then you can stick it on the side of your notebook and then fold it over itself which I think is very cool. Uh, now we need to try and gently put this back in a way that means that I'm not going to ruin my day. There we go. So little Go Bananas mini sticker sheet and then little mini sticker sheet that have the initials for the days of the week. That's pretty cute. We'll put these parts to the side for now. Um, another sticker sheet. Oh, these are cool. Sorry, just getting like really excited about tabs. Oh my gosh, tabs. So we've got mini calendar stickers for 2024, which is cute. So you've got like the ability to set up a uh, year at a glance quite easily, which is quite nice. And then these ones, which are little tab ones. So you've got the mini calendar again, but you see the part on the side, you could stick out of your journal and then like fold over the edge. So that then you've just got like January, February, March, like running down the side of the page. That is pretty cool. So I like that. The bananas were from a monthly sub box. Awesome. Thanks for letting us know. Because, yeah, I, I, I didn't even know that they did subscription boxes. That's very cute. We've got some font stencils. What's this? An uppercase. Oh, sorry. That's the backing paper. This is the stencil. I'm like, this isn't a stencil. Why you lied to me? That's cool. So we've got some letter stencils here in a variety of different letters, you know, the ones that you need. I also like that they give you the inside of the letters too, like for, you know, A, where you've got that middle part of the A that you don't have something there for. It's very hard to show this to you. So you've got the middle part of the A at the bottom and the middle part of the B as well. That's nifty. I like that. And I like that it comes with the backing paper so you can see what it looks like. That's cool. And then we've got the same idea with the lowercase letters and we've got the little little letters and their little inserty bits and stuff too. So that's pretty nifty. Considering we're on the topic of stencils, I like that all of these have the uh, the ring punch out so you could keep them all together. Like if you're an oopsie daisy, I don't know, what's the, what's the word? enthusiast <laughs> I'm gonna use that like if you get a lot of their stuff then you can kind of keep them in a little folder together which is kind of nifty so they have some other ones as well they sent me some like hexagons I feel like we just need to move everything out of the way so that we can actually see stuff come on come on what are we doing here so we've got 
the little hexagons, which is cool, and then some bunting as well at the top. And then we've got some other hexagon designs, but these are the kinds that you'd probably use for decoration and maybe use some ink over the top and like dab it onto your page. I <sighs> Hexagons are really hard to draw, <laughs> so this is actually really, really useful. And that's really cool. I love it. And then we had this stencil as well, which has, what's this? Heptagon? A heptagon, which is also hard to draw. I like the fact that we have the two different sizes of the heptagon. So it's kind of like, you know, you have seven segments, so it could be like a seven days of the week type thing, which is pretty cool. You've also got triangular segments, which I assume are measured to the segments in here, which means that you could either draw them in individually, like to make, you know, your seven different triangle pieces, and then also have uh, the horizontal lines that you can then cut up that triangle so that you can use it for different things which is pretty nifty that's pretty cool yeah you have several binders full of stencils stencils are great i um i i, I like it when people are very mindful when they make stencils mindful to make them uh so that they are uh, actually look like the stuff that you're trying to to make oh we've got another one here too another Letters? Yeah, this is a different style, which you can't see. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is not... I don't usually show off plasticky things that are super transparent, <laughs> but hopefully you can see the letters here. <laughs> so we have another set of letter stencils, which is cool. So, other stuff that we got, because I have done this in the most unorganized method possible. Ah... Uh... Oh, lots more stencils. Wow! She sent me heaps of stuff. Like, I didn't even realize all of this was in here because I kind of, like, opened it up and was like, oh, that's really cool. I should, like, do this for an unboxing. And then, like, didn't actually go through it properly. So I've got one that's, like, all just about the kind of banana stuff. <laughs> like, it's bananas! Uh, so we've got, like, the little, like, banana face. And then the general banana, which you could use as something else. Like, it could be a pickle if you wanted to. Or a sausage. Like, if you just take the little nubbin off the end. Yeah, that's kind of cute. And we've got a little mini calendar, which I think is probably sized for September, question mark? Or maybe a particular month, I'm not too sure. But other little bits and pieces. Some number stickers to go with those lettering stickers before. This has been the most unorganized part of our whole unboxing. I apologize. Uh, there we go, stencil inspo. It actually tells you how you can use the stencil, which is cute. Oh, the banana's name is Eric. That's a good marketing tactic. Name the banana. So now I think of him as like a tiny person. <laughs> this is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Love it. Alrighty, that's cute. We love all of that. We have a little bananas coloring page. Like, it's bananas. To go with, it's bananas. And it also has a September calendar on the other side, which is nice. So I guess that this must have been from some kind of like a sub-esque box type thing as well, possibly. And then we've got some full sticker sheets. So we have full sticker sheets that have a whole bunch of labels, which is pretty cool. I like the font. It's just, it's like fun, but it's not too, uh, it's like not too detailed that it feels like cluttered or anything, but it's a little bit like, yeah a little bit fun uh and then we've got similar idea but in different colors so this is the be awesome set so this is for the bees and then we've got some decorative pieces for the bees as well oh so i have like all the stuff that's kind of like bee related like the hexagons and stuff like that and the bigger stickers from before and then we have all the stuff that's bananas related like the banana fonting and stencilings and banana banana bits which is pretty cool and then to go with our bananas and bees, we also have some washi tapes. So we've got one washi tape that's the very <laughs> appealing. Ah, I will see myself out. Um, eh, I can't get this open. Struggle. There we go. So the banana washi tape that has Eric, Eric here on it. He's just hilarious. There we go. And so little banana bits. Nice and yellow and punchy. And then I like the fact that she sent me two yellow sets and then sent me a yellow pen with it. That's like just a nice consideration. Bees and bananas. And then the other one is a kind of honeycomb and flowers type decorative. 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 Decoration. I'm, I'm literally just going to rip it because I'm having a struggle 
Sorry, type. <laughs> you lived as few dead to drink. But this one has the flowers and hexagons on it. It's kind of like the honeycomb pattern, which is pretty cute too. So. Oh, we have another tape. We have another tape that has little bees on it. The bees. The bees. I feel bad for ripping the boxes because they are very cute boxes, but I just, I can't get into it. My thumb is too sensitive right now. <laughs> so this one's on a blue honeycomb pattern. It has little bees on it. Which is pretty nifty. Alrighty. So those ones are our bees and bananas and decorative bits. But I told you that she also sent me some other kind of functional stuff here. Um, which I thought was very generous of her. Also I will just say that the package came with this really cute like floral paper. Which you could totally use as decoration in your journal. But anywho. So the functional pieces that she sent me. She sent me a journal grid guide. Which is like a plastic template kind of thing. That you can use to divide your page up into different ways. But I don't know what sizing it is. So. Stuck on with some tape. There we go. Take the tape off. Take the tape off. So how to use a grid guide for tips and tricks. So it has a QR code that I assume takes us to either like a blog post. Or maybe a, a video or something that tells us how to use it. But. This is cool. Now, like, for my grid guides, I just usually set up a little grid spacing ruler type thing for myself. Use a little piece of paper from my journal. Um, oh, oh, noises. Sorry, team, sorry. So I'm not too sure what, uh, what journal size this is size to. And some of these pieces of plastic need to be punched out. So I'm just going to punch, punch them out. They have been cut so that you can kind of make little dot uh, markings on your page when you come to the different intersections, which is kind of nice. It's quite convenient. And because they're dots, it's not like you've got any kind of, um, I don't know, structural weakening <laughs> from having like lines. Uh, let's see. There we go. So obviously it's like a piece of plastic that has a film that's been like printed on it so that then you can have the uh, various line markings. But it says it's an A5 journal guide. I'm, I'm going to stop punching these out because I'm making little plastic confetti on my desk. And I'm going to get out a ruler and actually measure this so that we can kind of see what we've got. So in terms of the sizing, it is 19 centimeters down, which I think is the same as an entre and olive yep 19 centimeters down is the same as an entre and olive and then it has 13 across which is also the same as an entre and olive so in theory this should be able to be used in an entre and olive notebook um yeah I, I did see that somebody mentioned that this was printed crooked i should probably line this up against a notebook and actually have a look stop stuffing around with the little dots and show the people what they need to know <laughs> Where is a notebook? You know, you think that I'd have one hand here. There we go. So, here is a notebook. So what we would do, effectively, is to take our little grid spacing ruler and then line it up with the vertical edge. In theory, that's cute. And then it kind of highlights the dots that you would need to use in order to make different divisions, which is kind of cool. Um, what I will say is that the reason that I like to make my own for this is because I am a little bit particular about how I like to do certain divisions. For instance, for this one, for thirds, she's got a box at the top that's blank. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 down I would prefer not to have a space between them and I would just butt them up against each other and make it 12 I think is that how it works no it must not be I think it's like 12 break 12 break 12 where she has break 11 break 11 break 11 double break that that is not how I would typically do it <laughs> But still, oh, it's a banana for Eric. Thank you very much for the super sticker. That's very exciting. Eric is the banana. Go, Eric. Go, banana. So I like the idea of this, but because I am, I am me, 
<laughs> and I am inclined to do things specific ways, I probably wouldn't use this. But it might be really helpful for people who like this is the, the grid spacing that they like to use. So, nifty tool. The other thing that I thought was super nifty, and um, probably the part about the order that I was like the most excited about, is that she sent me these really cool washi tapes. I'm just getting this back into the package and, and struggling with it. You can probably see them off to the side here. She sent me these really cool washi tapes that are effectively just like a number ladder and a letter ladder. And the numbers are for the days of the month. You can see here. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got the days of the month in terms of like the days of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., etc. Which I think is pretty cool. Um, at the end of the numbers, you've got some stars as well, which is is like, you know kind of cute, kind of interesting. Um, you know, for if you want to like fill out the rest of the page or something. But I think that these would be really, really useful for anybody who does like to do any kind of vertical calendar, or if you do like a habit tracker where you have like a line per day or anything like that. This is very nifty. So that was pretty cool to see. I wonder if we open it up just to just to check. To make sure that it actually lines up with the page. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, but but we will have a we'll have a little cheeky cheeky sneak peek. Uh, where is Thatcher? We're not gonna leave it on the page because I it's it's one of those things I'm like, I don't wanna I don't wanna waste it. But we'll have a look. So the tape okay, that's good. The tape starts at 31. So we can do a little bit of a test run, which is nice. <laughs> attempts to get off the roll and if we take I'll we'll just take a page that I've already kind of half started using and we'll line it up here there we go put the star in the box star in the box yeah yeah totally lines up look at that that's so satisfying so you just wouldn't have to number them you just like put it all in it's like ah oh. So cute. I think that that's, yeah, that's just like a really cool idea. I also like how, given the stuff that she's printed it on, it lay, lays down very nicely and it kind of blends into the page very well. So we've got numbers and days of the week. Very nifty. The question is like, will I actually end up using it? I'm probably honestly just going to like default to writing them out myself. But like, if you set up a lot of those types of calendars and you don't like writing out those little numbers, then it's a super handy tool. T T B H super handy tool. So that was the stuff that I was given from Oopsie Daisy. So very big thank yous to Joe. I very much appreciate that. There's some very cool things in there, and I like what you're doing. Uh, I'm pick I'm picking up what you're putting down. So and she, yeah, she also has ones in the horizontal direction too, which is really cool. Um, you know that idea of people getting to getting to use their journals the way they want to. So then we come to the journal say bits. And one of the journal bits that I got that I mentioned before, because I went on this giant like hunt for the pencil case, and then it was actually in the other order. So this is the pencil case that I got from Journal Save because I have no chill when it comes to pencil cases. But the thing that I found interesting about this pencil case is that the zip is like on an angle, but intentionally. So it's it's kind of you unzip it, but then it kind of is supposed to sit flat like this. Now I have calligraphs in here, I'm pretty sure, so they're probably all gonna spill out when I open this. Unless I'm like super careful. No, I'm not careful. Absolutely not. <laughs> like, like unless I'm super careful. Instantly betrayed, but that's because again, it like it's hard to show you, but it kind of opens up so that then you've got this like sloping edge. Ah, there we go. I stuck some labels on these so that I could tell which one was which, but the labels aren't super, super sticky. They don't, they don't stick as well as I would have liked. But that's okay. I'll just press them down again. But I'm going to try and take these out. Like, you can see I'm, like, nervous about it. I'm like, oh, God, you're just going to roll away. I want to show people the pencil case. I'm sorry, pens. I'm sorry. Uh, uh. So... <laughs> just pens everywhere so in terms of in the middle of this yeah we've got some various little pockets that are mesh but they've like been sewn down the middle so you can't put anything super long in there uh on the other side we have more of like a half pocket that isn't sewn down the middle so you can put stuff in the back here uh, we've also got a pocket 
here that you can slip stuff into, which is kind of cute. I like I like pencil cases with pockets. Um, this one, more so than anything, I just like it for the size um, and the fact that you can like fully open it out to, to put things in. But I'm going to shove all of my pens back into here because we have other stuff to look at. <laughs> like this creative pencil case. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it probably would have been a better idea to open it the other way. But I didn't do that, and now here we are. But they are long enough to at least fit the calligraphs. Where is a Tombow? We need to check for a Tombow because the sizing is always measured against a Tombow. Not that I remember where I've put any of them. Alrighty, here we go. Here is a Tombow. So yes, it just dis distinctly fits. Tombows fit in this pencil case with a little bit of wiggle room, which is good. Very helpful. Yeah, open it upside down. Exactly. I should have probably done that. But again, I am a special lady and I didn't think about it <laughs> before I did it. So we'll shovel those back in. I need to find better storage for my calligraphs because this isn't even all of my calligraphs. Um, obviously, because we've got the, the 10 that we swatched earlier. Uh, but yes, Tombow, the ultimate test. There we go. But yes, you can fit a decent chunk of uh, pens into this pencil case. It's just that you have to be careful about making sure that you don't overstuff it and then open it up and have everything spill out onto your desk. So, the journal say portion of this uh, unboxing-esque type thing, we don't have as much variety in the items uh, because I pretty much exclusively wanted to get a keyboard, <laughs> actually. Um, so... Again, it was one of those like, hey, we'll give you a dollar amount and you can get effectively whatever you want. So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, one of the things that I've been thinking about is that because I work you know, for myself, by myself, uh, I don't really get out of the house very much. And a couple of weeks ago, I took my, I'm going to call her my mother-in-law, even though we're not married. I took Vogel's mum to an appointment. And rather than just like leaving her there and coming home, I just decided to stay. So I went to a little kind of, coffee shop-esque kind of thing. Um, I was just like, you know, listening to a podcast, working in my journal kind of stuff. And I thought like, you know, this would be really nice to do for work at some point. So I was thinking I could take my iPad with me and I could just, you know, script out videos or something like that and just be out in amongst other people, which would be kind of nice. So I thought something that'd be cool to get in order to do that was a little keyboard. So I got this little keyboard here, which I thought was very cute. So it's like the one thing I wanted from this hole was to get a keyboard. I thought it was kind of cute. Um, I like the little circular <laughs> little keys and it just it looks a little bit fancy and the space bar is kind of fun to press for some reason. It just sounds different to the other ones. So this is just a little Bluetooth one. It is a uh, it does actually have a little backing piece on it. It's just somewhere else at the moment because I need to put batteries in it so that I can use it. Um, yeah, it's like a little click clacky, but it's like very mechanical and it feels very cute. So I wanted to get this. I am. I'm so fancy. <laughs> but I just thought it was kind of sweet. So I thought that it would be nice to have a keyboard to take with me because while I can type on a screen, it's just absolutely not my preference. I would much rather uh, try to do this one instead. So I thought that maybe I could get this and I could take it with me to my little my little coffee shop and go and do some do some stuff there. So that was the main part that I, I got. So that was a, a good chunk of the uh, portion that they uh, allowed me to spend at the store, but it is very, very cool. Um, oh, sending good vibes and greetings from South Africa. Yay! You're a member for four months. Oh, that's very exciting. I didn't realize that it gave like little announcement cards like that so thank you kim for being a member for four months that's real cool um so yeah for the rest of the 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 kind of whole stash type thing i just got a couple of bits and pieces that i thought like maybe one day i could use in my reading journal so i think this one was a bonus that they just sent me so it's like a sticker or something we won't look at that because I, I didn't pick it so it doesn't count it doesn't count um so i got these two packs which are just kind of feather-esque kind of stickery bits on a, a PVC type thing. Um, and they're exactly the same, so we'll just get out the blue ones and have a look at them. <laughs> but again, it's that idea of like easy decoration. Like I could draw feathers, sure, but it would be 
a lot of effort and I wouldn't be able to draw them like this. But I thought they looked very dreamy. And I think we get at least two of each design. So like these two little little feathery bits here. I think the feathers make for pretty, pretty decorative stuffs. So I've got a whole bunch of different little ones here. They're all on that kind of like shiny plasticky kind of stuff but then when you stick them in they blend into the page really nicely but yeah and then you can see that you can just peel them back because it's a sticker stick them into the notebook so i got blue and pink because i thought they were the cutest i think they also had like a green and maybe a purple and possibly an orange um i think the last time i got stuff from journal say i got butterflies as well because they've got like a very similar thing uh, similar type of deal but with butterflies and those are really cute too uh, they're all going to be very good decoration for my reading journal at some point it's the general idea so we can put those ones back into their little packet there we go and then again with this idea of like i'm going to use this stuff in my uh in my reading journal i got myself a set of washi tapes uh, that were in this, it's called like the past history story collection. And the idea was that I could use these to do decoration in my reading journal. I certainly did. And I really liked these ones for the fact that they all kind of just matched each other. Now I will say that when I opened this up, it had this very strong kind of like adhesive smell, which was really not the business, but it did quickly dissipate. So if you are sensitive to smells, just be like mindful of that if you get this. Um, but like, like, if I really shove my nose in it, I can still smell it faintly, but absolutely not as much as when it first came. So in this set, we have a couple of small ones, a couple of thin ones, like a little, like, ropey kind of thing. Um, some kind of letters, which I think are, I say letters, words, I think they're all, like, almost kind of Christmas themed. Like, merry and bright. Obviously, I cut this piece off and had no intention of using it. So, <laughs> we'll stick that part on our, on our little piece here. There we go. That's cute. Um, but they have like a, a bunch of different words like ho 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 and fun and I just cut out the ones that actually kind of matched what I was doing. I've got some like musical note type things and, and whatever else. The part in particular that I quite liked, I quite liked this one because it just felt kind of eclectic and you can see I've like ripped a piece of it off and stuff because I used this quite a bit in the in the reading journal setup. It is certainly not the quality of the washi tape shop but it still was pretty okay so i just had like a bunch of different pieces and stuff and so i just rip off little pieces of it and did some layering with it and whatever it was quite cool so that one was pretty good for that and then this large one on the side here is more kind of like you'd cut out individual pieces like the sticker like the washi sticker kind of thing except it's just one big piece <laughs> so It's hard to peel because it is so wide, but you can see that it has just a bunch of different bits and pieces. So I cut out individual little bits and stick it onto the page in various places, again, for that kind of layering effect. So these worked really well in giving me a lot of options when it came to doing that layering because I didn't want to use like the same repeated elements over and over and over again because that would look a little stale or a little boring. But this had enough variation that I didn't have to feel that way. So I had lots of, lots of little options for it, which was cute. So that was one part because I knew that the start of my reading journal setup, I wanted it to be very vintage inspired. So this worked quite well for that type of vintagey look. Great for collage, indeed. So that was something I got for that one. But then I also knew that I wanted to have um, just other, other kind of aesthetics and cynics for other pages. So I got... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I just, I, don't, I hope this doesn't hurt your ears because my, my microphone is sensitive. But I got like all of these tapes. <laughs> They're just all of these PET tapes um, in a variety of different like styles and colors and whatever else. Like some of them you can tell are cousins. They are part of possibly the same set. Like all of these ones I think are related. And I think that all of these ones nope that one there looks like it's related 
And then this one looks like it's related to this one, maybe. I'm not too sure. I'm not sure how they match up. But I think they're like a couple of different little collections of stuff. Um, and they are in a variety of different sizes. So like obviously these two rolls we have quite a bit. And then these ones we have less. But that's because they came in a set with a bunch of different designs. That one's another bigger one. But so... We'll have a quick snoop, a, little, a, a cheeky peek at what kind of designs we have here. But this would be the kind of thing where you'd cut out individual elements and like scatter them around the page, that type of thing. No rolling away. That's not the business. So eh, pick these up, pick these up. So you can't roll away, you fiends. And we'll pick out one that I've already started peeling because I think I did do a little show and tell at one point or something. But these ones are kind of, they kind of like watercolory gemstone, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's, it feels kind of geometric because it feels like they're in little, almost triangular segments or something when they've, when they've painted them. But then it also feels very kind of watercolor-esque. But this one's kind of like, I guess, chess inspired. You've got like some chess boards and some florals and whatever else and stuff, but it's, it's cool, eh? So I was thinking like that could be a general decorative-esque element. I'm going to have to make sure that I put it to the other side so I know which ones we've actually looked at because there are a few for this one. So that's that one. And then this one is a cousin of that tape. So I think that it came in the same set probably. Uh, but this one is more like kind of Eh. Flip it the right way around. We've got like a. Eh. There we go. <laughs> Very delectable. Uh, chemistry, kind of, but like old, old timey chemistry. Yeah. Um, so you've got like your your sciency book and your test tubes and your little potiony vial things. I think it actually says, yeah, it says potions on it. Um, but uh, it's just cool. I thought that it was it was quite interesting. So I was like. You know, there's probably some kind of certain book series out there that this would be like the vibe of, like it, it would fit quite well with. So I thought that that could that could work in my reading journal is the idea. So we've got that one. Um, on a similar vein, I think we've got one that's more kind of stargazing theme or something similar to maybe this one I think I'm not too sure again peeling these off isn't really my favorite part but <laughs> there you go yeah the little astrology signs on it is really cute eh um and so this one is kind of again upside down because I am that way inclined with things so you've got like the little uh, I don't even know what these are called, but they're cute and I like it. And you've got some cogs and you've got the potions again and then you've got the chess set pieces and then you've got the telescope. So these all very much like fit together, I feel. Like they feel related to each other and they're very pretty, very pretty. I do wish that the cogs were like standalone pieces rather than going to the edge of the tape because then you kind of have to use them on the edge of a page unless you don't mind them cutting off, but yeah, the potions would totally be fun for Halloween. Halloween-esque kind of setup. So that was very cute. I feel like that's three of the of the jemmy kind of jemmy kind of colored ones. I feel like there must be another one in here somewhere. You look kind of similar. You look kind of similar too. But you guys look like you're related to each other. You two look like you're related to each other. I'm trying to do this in kind of an order, but <laughs> yeah, maybe not. We'll do this one. Okay, so again with the attempted peeling. I will eventually open all of them and then they'll all be a lot easier to open for next time. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a kind of uh, a steampunk-esque kind of theme but with less browns, I guess, because a lot of the time when you're doing a steampunk, or when you see steampunk things, they're very like browns, bronzes, maybe some golds, uh, burnt orange, maybe a teal kind of color. So this color palette isn't really quite that, but it's still pretty, so. <laughs> this one is a lot more purple, um, but you can still see that kind of like geometric-y, watercolor-esque, hard to describe. I'm just, you know, you know what job I would suck at is describing the flavors of wines? I like, yes, it tastes like fermented grapes. <laughs> like, I'm getting, I'm getting notes of 
grape. Um, <laughs> I'm getting notes of alcohol, but so pretty, super, super pretty purples. And then we've got a lot of like snowflake-esque kind of designs in there too. So this one I think must be a separate, a separate collection because it doesn't really, it, it feels like painted by the same person, but not part of the same set is what it feels like. So we'll put that one to the side, but I'm sure that I have some kind of book that I will read eventually where that will be the vibe. We'll stick that one back down. Cute, cute, cute. And then we've got his compadre, which does have words in it. I'm not really a f usually a fan of there being uh, washi tape, words words in decorative washi tapes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, mainly because, at least my eye, very quickly draws two words in a washi tape, um, especially if there are no other words around it. Like if it's if it's a um, a script tape, it's not really too much of a problem for me. But if there's a whole bunch of like florals and then like a word that says like summer or something, um, then my eye gets drawn very quickly to that. Good question. Where are these fancy purple tapes from? All of the tapes that we're looking at in this part, they are all from Journal Say. Uh, peel, peel, peel. I could have done all of this ahead of time, but absolutely not. So yeah, there you go. You can see. <laughs> It says ice and snow, so I probably wouldn't use that part of it, but I'd use the other parts. See, this is where it's like the gemstone-y kind of stuff comes from. We actually have gemstones in this one. And then little ice blocks. But oh, this part here with these little gems, so pretty. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's like eclectic, but they all kind of work together. And I think that I think that these three in particular, the first three we looked at, feel like they all are part of the same family. Um, and I think that these two um, are part of a, like an aside family. Like similar artistry style, but different, slightly different vibe. So those guys are there. We then have a set of at least four four if not five here and these ones are a bit more like while while these ones were kind of like watercolor gemstoney that kind of stuff these ones feel i'm gonna say more cartoony but it's not quite what i mean uh hopefully you kind of understand what i mean when you see them so it's it's a bit more like stylized but still very cute so this one is very much like music and bird cages is the is the vibe the vibe on this one uh so that's the repeat i will say that i think that the reason that these sets come with more tapes is probably because the repeat is shorter like you saw in the washi tape shop one right we had to <laughs> roll for like a meter before we got to a repeat these ones each seem to have maybe like somewhere between five to eight designs per tape before you get to a repeat but yeah yeah, a little pack together. Oh yeah, it, it's it's very tricky. I find to to uh, navigate the journal say website sometimes. Um, I also find that like uh, some of the items in terms of their product names are a little hard to describe. Um, like some of the products feel like they're just keyword stuffed, so that they show up in search, which like I get it, it makes sense. But then when you actually get to like specific variants of products, they don't all necessarily have a separate name. So some of them will be like, uh, washi tape stickers is like the general listing name, and then each of the different variants is just like a, a string of letters or something like that, or it'll be like XVTF three O one. XVTF302 kind of thing. I'm like, that doesn't really give you much of a descriptor to go with. So this one we have uh, timepieces, like watches, clocks, stuff. The birdcage is back. We've got some swans who obviously escaped the birdcage. It's a love story. I'm pretty sure that they, they escaped their cages to be together. And we've got some more little cloud bits, which is cute. The chessboard comes back but in a slightly different way maybe this was done by the same person just in a different artistry style it's cute though i like it so but that one i think what i'm gonna do rather than rolling them all up and all out again i'm just gonna unroll a bunch for you and put them down because i think that's just gonna be a little easier because as much as it is fun to give everybody their time to shine their moment in the sun the rolling and unrolling process of this is not my favorite. <laughs> uh, 
And I think that what I really need to do though, because obviously like we've got all of these tapes and then I've got all of the ones that I just got from the washi tape shop as well. Like I'm probably going to have to do another washi tape declutter. Oof. But if you'd like to see me do another washi tape declutter, let me know by liking this video. So this one is a little bit different. This was more like kind of castles. It says from God on it. So I'll probably cut that part off because I don't, again, really like to have text in my tapes. But I think that the general aesthetic is quite pretty. So this guy is more like... <laughs> more akin to the ones that we had before. Because <laughs> we've got kind of like some columns, like... Um, when I say columns, I'm talking like the architectural piece, yeah? Um, those ones. Oh, I think someone needs to tell Aline that she is at the start of the video. There we go, because that A-Line house comment feels like it was from quite a while ago. Um, I think that's, this is weird thing that I think that YouTube needs to fix. <laughs> like, maybe, I don't know, question mark. It's only if people actually care. But... Oftentimes when people join a live stream, they're not necessarily joining at the same part as everybody else. And I don't know how to fix that because it, I want people to be here as part of the action with all of us in the, in the here and now. But, you know, again, if it doesn't bother people, it's not really a problem, is it? So when you get up to this part, Aline, hello. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> it feels like, it feels like I'm calling out to her from the future. From the future. There we go. So we've got these ones here, which is, again, you can kind of see that they all feel very similar to each other. This one feels like wedding vibes. <laughs> but there we go. So those are our little pieces so far. So these guys all feel like they kind of matched these two that we had here. So that's why I kind of think it's like a set of five. Cannot remember though. I think of the ones that we have, this one at the bottom is the one that feels like it doesn't fit the most. So maybe it's a set of four and then a separate tape. But I, I don't know. Yeah. Fixed by clicking the live button to sync. Interesting. Is there a live button? Do I do I press the button? That's the live chat. Oh, oh, and I can I can do like separate things. That's interesting. I'm getting myself distracted. <laughs> I don't know why, but I read that message of, like, you might need to check that you're alive. <laughs> okay, there are a set of five. That's good to know. Thank you. I appreciate you going and having a look at that for me. So that is that set, um, which, yeah, I kind of felt like I would probably use that in my reading journal at, at some stage when I start reading maybe some probably fantasy-esque, like... It feels kind of romantic, so probably some kind of like a fantasy romance type deal, but anyhow, it's kind of cute. The bottom next to the volume button. Oh, okay. I have to like, I have to, oh, okay. Okay. Is that a, is that a button? I just thought it was a, I just thought it was a label. <laughs> You're looking at it for you. Well, I still appreciate you coming back here and telling me that it was a set of five. <laughs> there we go. And that one, Urpa, to the side. So, quite a stash. I think that possibly, because one of the things I'm thinking about with regards to this, like, storing of the washi tape stuff, because obviously when they're all stored on a roll, uh, they take up quite a lot of room. So I was wondering about unrolling the whole thing, cutting them out as individual pieces all at once, and then storing them in little kind of packets. Uh... So that then I don't have to take up like huge amounts of drawer space. I think it's a little bit different with a washi tape like you know, this this guy here or whatever. Where you want it to be a full continuous roll because you want to be able to fit it to whatever space you're using. But because these are distinct individual pieces, I thought it might work to kind of cut them up. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Also, it's been a it's been a minute, so tink. Because <clears throat> that idea that I'm talking about, I have done it previously. I do it with my um my floral ones in particular. So you can see that I kind of cut the pieces up and then just store them in a little snack lock bag. So that then I have all of the little 
all of the little pieces in there so that then it's like hey i'm doing a sunflower month i can just go and grab this little bag and use it i haven't done the whole roll of tape um because this would be a little bit thicker if i had uh but for any uh month that i'm using that kind of decorative piece I will just do that um, to, to save myself time later. So rather than having to like get the tape out again, unroll the tape, cut out the pieces I want, I'll just like batch all of that cutting at once so that then I can just use the pieces later. Makes it a little bit easier for me. So we do have some more to have a look at. So we will unroll them and put them out onto the page. I'm gonna lay it this way, even though it looks a little bit strange. Uh, because this is more of a kind of like a vertical design thing but you can see we've got some like cute little flowers and some little photo framey bits and other little pieces of greenery and like a candle and stuff um, which is in a distinctly different decorative style compared to the last ones uh, but this one has violins and a recorder or a flute of some description um, this one's got like an outline of some kind of string instrument but it's like covered in flowery bits and stuff. And I just thought that was really cute. I thought that was very cute. Uh, I don't know which ones in particular come in this set. So I'm kind of just unrolling ones that look like they're in a similar-ish colorway. Boink. And putting them out onto my desk. There we go. So this one's got more like a darker kind of color palette ever so slightly. With some darker blues and then some windows. Window type designs. I'm like sitting here with my like twisting of my head so that I can see stuff um but yeah it's like what what is this called is this called like a a snowdrop or something I, I'm not very familiar with flower names but these feel like they're cousins and this one just says blue on it so that's a really good start <laughs> yeah they can cause some creasing though haven't tried them with the PET tapes interesting wrap them onto washi tape cards yeah yeah I would be worried about the um creasing but it's also with the wrapping on the washi tape cards um that works best for tapes that are already sticky on the back right like ones that don't have a, a backing on them this is a question by the way this is not me you know claiming to know um but i would expect that it would be easier for tapes that are uh, are not paper backed because then they don't just like unroll Lily of the Valley. Alrighty, so yeah, I'm not I'm not savvy. Not savvy on the flower names. Uh, this one has blue bits on it, as you can tell. Uh, so we have uh, this one here called Lily of the Valley, which I just, just learned just now. <laughs> um, there we go. Using my ruler to hold them down so that we can kind of see them. I feel like I really could have done this a better way, but you get a lot more of the pattern exposed if I do it in the horizontal. So I apologize. <laughs> so those ones are looking pretty cute. We do have another one from this set, which we're going to have a look at too. But we will hoppa, put this back on the roll. <clears throat> Rolling. See, that's smarter. Why wasn't I doing that before? It's that whole like, idea of like work work smarter not harder <laughs> you need to go get some sleep fair well i hope you sleep well thank you for joining us for our unboxing of i told you guys it was it was a big one we have a lot of stuff here a lot of stuff i really need to i need to stop what i actually need to do is do a proper stationary declutter i think i think that that would be an excellent aim an excellent use of my time uh but I'm not too sure how to actually go about it because I have, it's not like, I'm not a hoarder. I would not consider myself a hoarder at all, uh, but I do get a little bit worried about like, what if I get rid of this and then I need it at some point? Like, what if I get rid of something and then I find like the perfect use for it and then I don't have the thing? But at the same time, decluttering is one of my favorite sports. I love decluttering. I love the satisfying feeling of having decluttered stuff. So I'm not too sure how to go about that. Uh, just to kind of like, you know, have this internal conflict um, <laughs> kind of thing. She says with how many journals? No, 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 no. I will not take this. I will not take this kind of abuse. <laughs> See, the thing with my journals is that I know they'll get used. I have I have no issue with the idea of the fact that they will get used. The issue that I have in terms of stationery is like, 
am I going to use this tape in particular or is it just going to sit in a drawer, you know? Because uh, I do have some washi tapes that have been with me for many moons and have not been touched. Yeah, that's right, you cheeky little, cheeky little something. I don't know. I'm going to call you a biscuit. You cheeky little biscuit. <laughs> like, yeah, there we go. I'm not, yeah, I'm not a hoarder. I have strong hoarding tendencies. That's right, like, because I, I know that, you know, people who are hoarders, like, you know, genuine hoarders like they have they have a lot of stuff and they have a really hard time letting go like I can let go of things I just have certain areas that I am less inclined to let go of stuff compared to others see I learned from my mistakes and I'm laying this in the correct direction for you now yeah exactly like yeah it's you keep everything kind of a thing I don't I don't have any issue with that I usually don't have a lot of issues with letting stuff go in general um I, uh, I, I think that it's just the, those, those particular categories of stationary bits that I'm just like, oh, I think it's also the tricky part is, is that if I'm going to, if I'm going to get rid of stuff, typically my default reaction is throw it away. Other people don't want your crap. Yeah. That's, that's my kind of, um, default setting when it comes to my decluttering. There we go. This one's pretty cute. It's like little greeny, greeny lady bits. And this one's very pretty. Um, but when it comes to my stationary stuff, I'm just like, this is good quality stuff. Like, I don't want to just like chuck it out. I need somebody to give it to. But then if I don't find someone to give it to in a timely fashion, it still just sits in my office. Like I have a box. I call it, I call it my fuck it bucket. Yeah. So we have a box of stuff. It's called my fuck it bucket. And that's where I put all of the stuff that I know that I don't want to keep but it's still good quality enough stuff that somebody could get value out of it. Um, but when things make their way into the fuck it bucket, unless I actively like make a choice to at the time, they often stay there for a really long time rather than getting passed on to people who would value that those things. So it's like, I need to, if I'm going to commit to this decluttering project, I think is what I'm trying to say. If I'm going to de declutter my stationery, I need to have a plan as to where that stuff is going to go in a timely manner so that then it doesn't just sit in the fuck it bucket for an extended period of time. This set is very cute. I like this one. It's got like the little roses, but it's kind of like a little bit dark. Like it's not like light fluffy roses. <laughs> I guess. Like if you compare it to some of the tapes we had before, this one feels like, you know, they're a little bit aged, a little bit like, you know, dried out and stuff. And it just has a different, different vibe, different feeling. But these are all very pretty. I think that of this set, my favorites are this one and this one. So they are definitely getting used in the reading journal. These ones are cute as well, but these two are, these two are the preference. Anywho. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you guys would be keen to see a decluttering, stationary decluttering video for me, from me, I would probably be keen to do it. Honestly, I think it would be a flipping long live stream because if I'm going to declutter my stationery, I'm going to do a proper job of it. It's going to be an in-depth like play by play, go through all of the things, genuinely consider, does this spark joy or whatever. Um, <laughs> maybe we could do that for my next 12 hour live stream. Like Jess's extreme decluttering. You'd have to hold me accountable to not getting distracted though, because it would not be like this one where we get to unroll every single tape and have a look at all of the pieces because, uh, because th then I would just be like sitting here playing around with my stationery instead of getting rid of things like I'm supposed to. <laughs> I, I do love the cluttering though. So I'd be, down, I'd be down to do it. If you think that that would be fun, then make sure to like this video. Cast your vote by liking this video. If you think it would be lame, don't like this video. But if you like me, then you can like the video. <laughs> That's for sure. We could be accountability buddies. It'd be great. So in terms of my journal say order, along with my feathers that I got and my keyboard, I also got all of these tapes in a variety of different patterns and different designs, which all look super, super gorgeous. Oh, I love them. But I need to put them all back into my, to my I'm going to say, it's just like a box. It's like a really beat up box that I have all of these things in because they do not fit in my washi tape drawer. So yeah, need to, need to fix that. 
<laughs> next door neighbor yeah possibly i know that there's somebody who lives kind of in my area down the street because last time i did a washi tape de-stash i just posted it onto our community group and said like hey is there anybody who has like little kids who like playing around with crafty bits because i have a giant box full of tape and i would love to give it to you Alrighty, team i am gonna skadoodle that was my haul. If you wanted any of the items, do make sure to check in the description box. I will be putting all of the items listed there. If you wanted to grab yourself a discount, then we do have the discount codes for those places down there as well, because we love savings. We will be back again for our more regularly scheduled live stream come next week on Monday or Sunday. So until then, bye for now. See you later. Have a good rest of your day.